It is 10 a.m. Good morning. I'm Lucas Panzeca broadcasting live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center at Two Rivers Ford. In a stunning move, Kentucky basketball coach John Calipari is leaving the University of Kentucky to be the next head coach at Arkansas, signing a five-year deal with the Razorbacks. Per ESPN, Calipari had been the coach at Kentucky for the last 15 seasons and won the 2012 national title, but had only advanced past the opening weekend of the NCAA tournament once in the last five years. Tennessee women's basketball has hired Kelly Harper's replacement as the next head coach of the Lady Vols and former Marshall coach Kim Caldwell, who led Marshall to a 26-7 record last season and won a D2 national title at Glenville State. The women's college basketball season ended on Sunday. South Carolina beating Iowa in the national championship 87-75. The Gamecocks finish an undefeated season despite Caitlin Clark putting up 30 points. It is Don Staley's third national title as the coach at South Carolina. And the Nashville Predators split the road trip over the weekend, falling at the Islanders on Saturday, but winning in a shootout at the Devils on Sunday after a 2-2 regulation. They will host the Jets at Bridgestone tomorrow night. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Good morning. Happy Monday to you here from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center at Two Rivers Ford, one of my favorite places. That's where we're broadcasting live all day long for the Eclipse today. We also have giveaways courtesy of our friends at Two Rivers Ford. We're happy to have you guys along for the next three hours, 615-737-1045 is the number if you want to join the conversation. Ramon, Kayla, and Will just wrapped up. Blaine and Mickey, 3HL, they're going to be out here as well. Uh, And the eclipse, bud, happens right at the end of our show. 12.45 thereabouts is the latest update on when the eclipse begins. Apparently, we're supposed to have 95% coverage by just a little after 2 o'clock Central Time today here in Middle Tennessee. I'm going to stare into it. Uh, They tell you not to, and at this point, too many people are telling me not to to the point where I want to. Mm. I think it's a conspiracy. I think they're hiding something, and I'm going to find out what that is. (laughs) Is that, uh, I I just, I can't stop laughing. I can't stop using that picture that you told me about of 45 just staring (laughs) into the last one, pointing up at it. That's what Lucas is going to be doing out here today without proper adult supervision uh as i mentioned we are live from the newly expanded commercial vehicle center at two rivers ford the south's most trusted ford dealership you know this not because uh i tell you all the time but because deandre hopkins coach mac ramon foster don davenport just bought a new truck uh from two rivers ford you can do so as well out here in mount juliet it's seven miles east of bna um I thought the day that John Calipari left Kentucky would be one of the greatest days of my life. And I don't feel very good about it because he's going to Arkansas on reportedly a five-year deal to become the next men's basketball coach of the Razorbacks. It happened in the dead of night. I want details. Uh, Kyle Tucker, our buddy at The Athletic who covers Tennessee, uh, may join us today. We're going to uh, check in on his schedule. Uh, throughout the course of the afternoon. Busy day for him. If not, we'll have him on later this week. But Kentucky loses its basketball coach, and I'm just happy that Indiana didn't fire theirs at the same time as Kentucky's trying to hire a new one. That is the only positive about keeping Mike Woodson in my mind today. What an interesting dynamic going on in Lexington and in Fayetteville. Like, the amount of times I've heard this called as a win-win for both programs, and I guess you could make that argument, but Kentucky Athletic Director Mitch Barnhart has to feel miffed about this, right? I mean, they go through this whole process. Is he going to keep Cal? Is he going to pay the giant buyout? They have a press conference. Cal does his radio show. They do TV together. We're going to fix Kentucky basketball. Here are the changes we're going to make to the program. Cal is staying in Lexington. And then a couple weeks later, less than, 
he's gone and he's bolted to Arkansas. If I'm Mitch Barnhart, I'm like, hey, man, I kind of I stuck my neck out for you here. I could have fired you, probably could have come up with the money to fire you. And we decided to keep this thing going. And now you're bolting out of here. But for Kentucky fans, it's probably a different reaction. I bet you the majority of them are happy about this and believe they will have the pick of the litter on who they want to make their next head coach. Well, as they should. Kentucky is one of the most uh, impressive programs. They certainly have the financial resources to make it a viable spot for any of the best college basketball coaches in the country. What their list looks like is going to be interesting. I'm sure we'll see some reporting around that throughout the course of today. 615, I know we have a lot of Kentucky fans in the audience because I know how often I piss you all off. So if you would like to call in today and voice your questions, comments, and concerns, 615-737-1045, of course, is the number. You have access to the Zone TV broadcast. If you want to live stream the show where we broadcast at the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford, Zone TV is up and running. For some reason, Bert is here. I'm not sure why that's the case. He's here so that we can recreate the Donald Trump, Melania Trump picture from the eclipse. I just don't know which of us will be the ones standing stoically with glasses on like Melania or which of us will be staring directly at it like Donald. I, uh, I feel like we could just take interchangeable photos like with each of us in those roles and then just decide which one fits best for either purpose. I think both will be produced on social media. And I just saw a gentleman with a better pair of Crocs than you were wearing. Today, uh, here at the newly uh, expanded commercial vehicle center at Two Rivers Ford. How about that? (laughs) (laughs) So if you're watching on Zone TV, for some reason, Bert is here. He just brought me a coffee. I'm sure he spat in it. But throughout the course of today, we are going to have a great time here at Two Rivers Ford, as we always do, as you do, anytime you come out and shop with the best sales experts in the business. Um, like I said, I thought the day that Cal left would be a great day. And he replaces now Eric Musselman, who bolted for the USC job, as we were seeing some uh, rumblings around that last week. It is going to be a huge conversation about who kind of moves to the forefront or who, who is the biggest challenger to UConn in the landscape of college basketball because this team is going to have a ton of turnover coming up. We've got a national championship game tonight in the sport uh, a fun game that South Carolina I- Iowa made it a little closer throughout the course of it but it really never felt like they were going to be able to overcome the machine that Don Staley and South Carolina are at this point completing an undefeated season en route to winning I believe it's their third national title yep as a program the Gamecocks so congratulations to Don Staley and South Carolina fans on our buddy JP Hovey with Bussin is uh, celebrating in the streets today I'm sure they probably pulled him off Broadway the same time that they did Morgan Wallen, although one threw a chair and one didn't. <laughs> Tough scene. Uh, it, I thought it was Caitlin Clark's game early. The way she took over the first quarter was unbelievable. What, she had 15, 18 going into the second? Sure, but then unlike Kim Mulkey, uh, Don Staley made defensive yes. adjustments. And Correct. He was able to hold her to, I believe, only two points. She ended up with 30 the on the quarter. day. Yes, exactly. But... Does Kentucky go after Don Staley to be the next men's basketball coach? Fire up the hot board. This is this is the best time of year. Uh, you know, I mean, they have to consider all options. I know you're saying that tongue in cheek, but like, I, why would would Kentucky fans turn their nose up at that? Probably, I don't know how. <laughs> who is at the top of that hot board? Like, if you're a Kentucky fan, who is your dream hire? Well, it's a weird spot because the guys that are the up and coming names have already been hired in the college basketball cycle. That happened very quickly. I don't After think they want people- an up and coming name at Kentucky. I think they want to go. They're like, you're kidding. Arkansas just came and. and- swept up our coach okay we're gonna go swoop up somebody maybe it's billy donovan who's still in the nba i don't know i mean maybe they're gonna call dan hurley right they're gonna call nate oates Isn't billy donovan with the bulls right now he yes. has to be miserable he's the head coach of the bulls yeah he want, he probably wants a, a parachute out of there a golden parachute as a, as a matter of fact kentucky can provide one of those post haste former kentucky assistant billy yeah. donovan uh and national championship winning coach so this is going to be a fascinating search and we'll keep you updated uh, we also have, uh, as far as the uh, the news on the women's front, the Lady Vols have hired their newest coach, uh, coming by way of Marshall Kim Caldwell, was named the head coach of the Lady Vols basketball program. They announced it over the weekend. That seems to be received pretty well at this point. She's a very young figure. Uh, in the landscape of college basketball right now, women's college basketball, but was able to accomplish a lot during her time at Marshall 
uh, and I know Vols fans seem to be excited. We're going to reach out to the uh, to the University of Tennessee athletic department see if we can't get Coach Caldwell on the line at some point to talk to her about the direction that they want to take. Because watching that 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 uh, championship game yesterday afternoon, atmosphere electric, uh, crowd was on their feet. It felt like the entire time, even though South Carolina felt like it was in control, Iowa threatened enough. The star power that college basketball is losing, and I know we'll we'll talk more about what uh what uh, Don Staley had to say about Caitlin Clark later on in the show. But the star power that college basketball is losing on the women's side is going to be interesting to see if they can maintain that, right? This is something that the men's sport is struggling very much with. If Zach Zach Eady is the biggest star in the men's sport right now as the two-time NCAA player of the year. I mean, name a more famous men's college basketball player right now. It would be tough to. Uh, and you know whether whether you ha- whether you like his game, whether you like Purdue, he's a polarizing figure. So at least as a talking point, you see he's struggling to get nil money because he's Canadian. Yes, yes. Didn't that because that was a thing with Oscar Shibwe, yeah. right? And didn't he ha- he had to get his American citizenship in order to get nil money, which for Shibwe was very important because he didn't get drafted and he's currently playing in the G League. And and I'm I'm not going to pretend like I know what Zach Eady is as an NBA prospect, but it does feel like this is... He's probably Boban, to be honest with you. You're probably going to have to take him off the floor on defense. He'd probably get you a couple of buckets to play, play the post on offense. I mean, he's, you know, there there are places for people with that physically overwhelming of a size. I just don't know that he's going to be there the There are best. only so many of them. NBA, <laughs> that is correct. They are, they are not the same as you and I. We uh, are hanging out today at the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford. We're giving away a free mobile service works package that includes an oil change and tire rotation done at your home office. I've actually had the mobile service from Two Rivers Ford. It is so convenient. They make it so easy on you, not just as a customer if you're looking for a new car, but if you want to get your car serviced as well. To register for the giveaway, Upload a photo of what keeps you busy. Kids, dogs, games, whatever it is. Tag Two Rivers Ford on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and we will pick a winner at the end of the show. Make sure you tag us as well. Also, you do not need to own a Ford. They work on most makes and models, so if you want to know what it is to be a Two Rivers Ford customer without having to purchase one of their quality American-made Ford vehicles, you can do that as well and participate in the giveaway. Although, why wouldn't you want a Two Rivers Ford? They're the best. What keeps you busy? What would you upload if you were participating in this contest? Hmm. I feel like Robert would upload his birds. His birds? Yes. What his, birds? The quail coop he's working on in his backyard. All right, so we talked about this via text message. Uh, to come up with bets, bet punishments uh, for each of us, Bert has to wear a, a, a Kangol hat for a week. A next what? Time. A Kangol, like a Bruce Arians Kangol. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Those hats? Yeah. No, I don't. Mostly you're, you're yes, you know what kind of hat Bruce Arians wears. Like a beret? Is it? It's kind of no, like a beret. No, it's different than a beret. Well, I guess it's kind of like a front-facing beret, isn't it? No, that's like a different kind of hat. Either way, Bert has to wear one for a week uh, the next time he loses a bet. The next time I lose a bet, what have you two devised for me? Oh, you, oh my God. you've been Robert tripping over quick. You Just, had, why, are you, why is he here? I don't understand. What was your suggestion? So I thought Buck should have to spend a day doing things that Bert does. Uh, so that's going to p- local pawn shops, yard sales, Man-taking. estate sales, uh, just going back and forth with these people, not paying full price for items, haggling, uh, putting things together in the backyard, hauling large bags of soil. Living in the muck. Yes, exactly. Get your fingernails dirty. I would just love <laughs> oh. to watch Buck haggle with an old lady about some sewn hand good, a, a, a doily or something. I'm not paying a dollar for that. I want it for 50 cents. But I know Buck would Buck would rather overpay. Buck would rather pay double what it is than haggle and, and cut someone's price in half. And I, w- I would love to watch him squirm. I just don't want to have to extend the conversation. I will pay you more money if you leave me alone. You're the opposite. I feel like you want to barter just for the fun of bartering, right? They're like, all right, I'll go down to 50. Oh, no, no, barter with me, Gypsy, 30 cents. <laughs> Which is how most people uh, in, those, in those kind of sales settings, they want to negotiate with you. And then they get somebody like me who's just like, no, take more of my money and leave me alone. Let me go about with my day. 615-737-1045 is the number. Like I said, all four shows, Ramon, Kalen, and Will just wrapped up. We uh, are here throughout the course of our show and the start of the Eclipse. Blaine and Mickey will be here as well. Two Rivers Ford has the Eclipse glasses. Make sure if you are 
uh, participating in Eclipse-related events today that despite our jokes, uh, you make sure to put on the proper eye protection. And if you're not familiar with what the proper eye protection looks like, make sure you Google it before you just put on your blue light glasses and stare <laughs> yeah. right into the sun, all right? Let's be smart about this thing, kids. I'm Buck Rising. It's 104.5 The Zone.
Welcome back live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford, where all of our shows are broadcasting live today. Thanks for hanging out. Casey Alexander, Belmont men's basketball coach, going to join us as our tournament analyst here in just a second. And we'll get his uh, analysis on the women's game last night that saw South Carolina get past Caitlin Clark, basically just Caitlin Clark. I don't want to make it solely about Caitlin Clark, but she did not get a lot of help from her teammates throughout the course of that game. And then preview the national championship on the men's side of things tonight between UConn and the hated Purdue. Uh, I was around some Vols fans this weekend, Lucas, and I, again, uh, am, am always happy to see allies in my hatred of Purdue. And it's good to know that I have the entirety of the Tennessee fan base behind me yes. rooting for their downfall tonight. Absolutely. Uh, might as well just give UConn the repeat. <laughs> well, uh, I, that's not how I'm sure uh, Coach Casey Alexander is going to see it. He's always here to uh, caution us on our bad analysis and basketball uh, opinions. No, that's not going to help anybody tonight. Casey Alexander here with us now on 104.5 The Zone. Good morning, Coach. What's up, guys? How we doing? We're doing good. We're excited to see uh, the college basketball season come to an end. Should be a great game uh, tonight between Purdue and UConn. What did you make of the uh, the final four uh, matchups? We, it, it felt like Purdue potentially, and maybe we just had so much time to talk about two basketball games that we kind of went round and round too much on the analysis, but it did feel like a lot of people looked at NC State to have the potential to upset Purdue. Obviously, that did not happen. They were pretty dominant from start to finish. Yeah, I think they went according to script. Uh, both games were watchable, which was nice. Um, Alabama hung in there for a while. NC yeah. State hung in there for a while. Um, but in the end, I think the best two teams won. And, um, you know, so now here we are. I mean, I don't, it's pretty rare when you get the best two teams playing in the championship game. But it's it's pretty clear to everybody that uh, that's what we have with both UConn and Purdue. So we've talked about no one clear way to defend Zach Eady, no one clear effective way to defend Zach Eady, and we know that he's going to be able to draw fouls. Uh, we we know that Purdue has shooters around him, though they have not been on on full display throughout the course of the tournament. They've found ways without being super efficient from three, but they always have the ability to turn it on from range. How do you kind of see this one playing out tonight? Yeah, I think the formula is still the same as far as Eady is concerned, and and you saw a little bit of the potential uh, for disruption with NC State. I think with DJ Burns and his size, uh, he was able to neutralize Edie to some degree. You know, Edie, Edie got a lot of his points late in the game. Edie, Edie only shot two free throws in that game. He had five turnovers. And so the more you can guard him one-on-one, -on -one, uh, like I believe Donovan Klingon can do, um, you know, the more effective all of the other alternatives for guarding him will be, which is double teams and where are they coming from and how are they coming. And um, so I do think that's the formula. And we saw that play out a little bit with NC State. And we kind of saw Tennessee try to do that, right, Coach? Isolate guys on Edie, take away their shooters on the outside, which they did the latter, but obviously stopping Edie is another thing altogether. He went for a career high against Tennessee. But do you think – you mentioned the Klingon matchup, that that matchup between Donovan Klingon and Zach Eady is as good of as, of as an individual matchup as you can find against Eady in all of college basketball. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, I mean, there are a lot of good post players out there, but Klingon's playing at a really high level. He's got the size, the athleticism, uh, the physical girth to kind of hold his ground, and that's what you didn't see with Tennessee. Tennessee gave him a lot of looks, but they didn't have the one guy who could stand behind him and battle him one-on-one -on -one consistently uh, and that's where things are going to be different with uh, with UConn. I don't I don't think anybody can just stand behind him and play one on one in the post and it be good enough to win the game and beat Purdue. But if you have a guy that can make that difficult, and then you throw other things at him throughout the game from different different guys from different places, you know, then that's the disruption that you're looking for. Coach Casey Alexander here with us on 104.5 The Zone. We're breaking down tonight's national championship game on the men's side of things between Purdue and UConn. It, it, it shouldn't astonish me because I know UConn is one of the premier college basketball programs in the country, both men's and women's, Casey. But the idea that this could be their sixth title if they pull off a win tonight since 1999 makes me insane with somebody who's got a college basketball program that should historically be good and hasn't been able to get it off the mat since the 80s yeah you got to turn the you got to turn the page to a new century you know you're, you're talking about a long time ago uh when you're when you're indiana hoosiers long time and, 
for in this conversation. Uh, and it is amazing, though. Uh, it, it'll be, you know, even with a win tonight, um, it, it's interesting to me. How long will it actually take before we put UConn in their rightful place in modern day basketball? Because mm. they have been phenomenal, uh, and even this season, I mean, they have absolutely dominated since um, you know since the beginning of the year, and um, and and they're still. Um, not not spoken of as the best or clearly the best or one of the best of all time. You know, you talk about back-to-back championships, which is what they're going for tonight. It's pretty amazing what they've done. I, I mean, the Hurley family obviously has deep roots in the sport, and, and Danny is uh, on, on the cusp of history with the second consecutive men's title for UConn, not just the idea that it could be their sixth since 1999. I, looking at the, the landscape of the sport right now, Coach, it's, it's kind of interesting because we, we open the show, obviously, with Cal uh, going to Arkansas reportedly on a, on a five-year deal. It's not like Kentucky has been winning a ton of championships under him, but they're consistently competitive. They recruit at the highest levels. They're, they're constantly talked about with the level of expectation that a championship program should have for all of the reasons be, that Cal and Kentucky have put themselves in in that position but as as you talk about putting UConn in its proper place or, or holding them to the uh holding them in the kind of regard that most people or or sports fans should at this point I'm, I'm just curious to see where the future of the sport is heading seeing somebody as big as Cal who's been such a front-facing part of college basketball on the men's side shifting spots at this point yeah the transfer portal as we've all talked about NIL as we've talked about it's going to make it very difficult for programs to function the way that they always have. There's only going to be a handful that can do it the way that they want to do it. And that's one thing that's so admirable about Purdue and the season they're having. These are homegrown guys, guys that have been in the program. Um, you know, only one transfer really in their top seven that are playing. Uh, you know, Duke can maintain that. There are some others that can maintain that if they want to. But by and large, I think you're going to be throwing darts with a lot of these programs because there's so much fluctuation with the roster from season to season, uh, more coaching changes than ever before. And so – um, I think the product is just as good or better than it's ever been. I think some of that's COVID-related and a lot of old old guys out there that are still playing. Uh, but what's going on behind the scenes and the inner workings of college athletics and basketball in, in particular, um, it's a mess out there, and it's just going to be a lot of turmoil from season to season, team to team. Coach, what does this mean for you for the SEC, top to bottom, because Arkansas has been a program that's had success under Eric Musselman, but obviously took a dip this past year and kind of were at the bottom of the pile there, dragging down what was really good, was a really good conference, kind of at the halfway point to the top. But now with Cal Perry getting pushed to Arkansas, and we'll see who Kentucky gets, and Dennis Gates with this recruiting class coming in, where do you think the SEC stands in regards to the Power Five heading into next season? Well, it's the best example that we that we can give. You know, the the one and done scenario and all of the NBA play, NBA players that Cal has had through the years has kept them uh in the final four conversation, but it hasn't bared itself out. Uh and a lot of the reason is because you just, you know, when you get to this time of the tournament, you know, and you run into a guy like Zach Eady in his fourth year, um you know, it's hard to win those kinds of games. And so, uh, you know, Arkansas on the other hand is a team Gosh, they were, what, in the Elite Eight the last two seasons uh, prior to this? So they they can get there. We know they have the resources. Um, you know, and so my my point in all of that is there's a lot of ways to win. If you have the money uh, and you can put the right kind of roster together in any particular season, you can work some magic with that team. Now, you're rolling the dice because if it doesn't work and, those, and that, that chemistry and the culture that you want doesn't form, then you're asking for trouble probably no better example than what you've seen with Musselman in the last two seasons. Coach Casey Alexander here with us on 104.5 The Zone. Women's National Championship decided last night. South Carolina completes an undefeated season. They do so pretty handily. Iowa got back in it late, but it was basically South Carolina the whole way through. Uh, what can you say about the work that Coach Staley has done with that program? Yeah, Casey? remarkable. I mean, there's there's no other way to look at it. A really tremendous job uh, over several years now. Uh, you know, they get they had the one loss last year. Um, otherwise, you'd be talking about back to back perfect seasons. And so, um, you know, they they they've got the formula. Um, 
hats off to her and to that program uh, to think that uh, South Carolina I don't I don't know where South Carolina women's basketball was 10 years ago but in the last 10 years um, it's remarkable what they've done well coach we appreciate you uh, sticking with us through another uh, March Madness bracket and enjoy the tournament game tonight coach Casey yeah. Alexander kind enough to share some of his time with us even if he's got to take a couple of shots at me in between yeah, you guys are great I've enjoyed it that's the man Casey Alexander with us on 104.5 The Zone. We are broadcasting live today from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford, where all four shows are out here for the Eclipse. That's going to happen at the uh, in the middle of our noon hour, so if you want to come hang out, watch the Eclipse with us and Blaine and Mickey, that is going to happen right in the middle of that. 3HL going to be broadcasting out here as well. They have certified uh, free certified Made in America iOS sunglasses while supplies last out here at Two Rivers Ford. So don't try to double up with your sunglasses. Come to Two Rivers Ford. Make sure you get the proper eyewear. Don't be dumb and go blind on the Eclipse Day, okay? Be smart. Come to Two Rivers Ford. That's why they, they're out here for you. Willie Jeans on the FNM Bank chat says, Kentucky will have a Brinks truck waiting in UConn's locker room mm. after the game tonight in Phoenix. That's the move, isn't it? Just I mean, that's, that's the move. make Dan Hurley say no like 20 times. Well, it's it's kind of like uh, you remember we talked about this. Maybe this was a primetime topic. I can't remember, but uh, the uh, the nose tackle DJ Reader went to Detroit for a free agent visit. They booked him a one way flight. He called his agent asking when he was going to get his flight out of Detroit, and he kept hearing back, "Uh, they're they're still working on it. They're still working on it. On it. Ultimately, before he gets the flight booked back." He has a two-year deal with Detroit. You find a way to not quite hold Dan Hurley hostage, but you kind of make him waste some time around it while you come up with the exact figure that's going to get him to say yes to be your next men's basketball coach. Because if you're talking about proven commodities, uh, there is nobody in current men's college basketball with the record of program building. And UConn, listen, UConn is a force. They have the facilities. They have the backing. Uh, they have the resources as a program to succeed at a high level because they've won titles, not just under Dan Hurley, obviously. Um, but what he was able to do uh, throughout the course of his career and the experience that he has over the course of this last national championship campaign and probably getting ready to win a second – there would be no better way to satisfy an unbelievable fan base in the landscape of sports like Kentucky basketball than to just be ready and waiting. Where, where's the – in Phoenix. Just yep. be ready and waiting at uh, at the Cardinal Stadium with a giant truck filled with money and probably gold bars. Well, when Alabama lost Nick Saban to retirement, remember we had the discussion, okay, who would the Saban swing be of this cycle when they were looking for his replacement? Mm. And we were saying, just from a resume standpoint, somebody that's won national titles, that's proven to be dominant in the SEC, it would have been just under that category, Urban Meyer or Dabo Swinney. And for various reasons, for each one, that wasn't going to be the move for Alabama. Kentucky has plenty of options in terms of the quote-unquote Calipari swing for this job, like it was when they hired John Calipari from Memphis, whether that's Scott Drew from Baylor or Dan Hurley or Nate Oates who just got to his first Final Four or going up to the NBA to get Billy Donovan who's obviously won multiple national championships. Do you bring Rick Pitino home? I don't know. Do That's, you bring that feels Rick like, Pitino home? That, that feels like the most entertaining oh my uh, answer. No, 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 because I need him when he's tired of uh, just – burying St. John's players at a podium after they lose because they're too slow uh, and not uh, not they don't work hard enough. I need Indiana to hire him, so Kentucky needs to leave him alone. I mean, do they give Bruce Pearl a call? I don't know. I don't know. But they're going to swing big, and there are various names that you can put into that pool that would be considered that home run type of swing. What do you make of the timing? I love the timing by Cal. Just on the, on the night before, less than 24 hours before the national championship game. Directly after the women's national championship. That's right. Right, which, you know, at least, he, at least he let the women's season come to an end peacefully. <laughs> He's out here just making a mess of the news cycle. Do, you know, it is, it's, a, it's a credit to who he is, though, truly. Because how many places across the country do you think are focusing more on John Calipari leaving Kentucky today? Or not, maybe not more, but as much as they're covering the national title between UConn and Purdue. 
I mean, it, it really is in, in all sports. I don't think it's just a college thing, although college can have some domineering personalities. It's as much about star power as anything if you want to dominate the coverage, not just, you know, getting your games on, on Tuesday nights or Saturday nights or something like that, playing in, the, playing in the Power Five or whatever the case may be. It is really a credit to who Cal is that he can sweep up the college basketball news cycle this way on the day yeah. of the national championship. And we have the discussion in here for coming back around at noon. Who's the face of college hoops right now? Is it Dan Hurley if UConn wins back-to-back tonight? But, I mean, we opened the show with John Calipari. He is the headline of the week, despite the fact that there are multiple championships being handed out. Maybe it still is Coach Cal. I mean, nobody creates waves like John Calipari does across uh, college basketball in the news cycle. And isn't it just a weirdly good fit at Arkansas? Like, that's a historic enough program that's been in Final Fours, right? That's won SEC championships. Their fan base will get up for basketball. uh, And the pockets are deep. The pockets are maybe deeper at Arkansas than they were for Cal at Kentucky from an NIL standpoint. So, and he's got the relationships. I I don't know. It's going to be fascinating. And uh, we'll see what happens. The SEC could be just an absolute gauntlet next year if, if Kentucky does. It, it, it absolutely is. But Dennis Gates is getting in a good recruiting class at Missouri. We know he's a good coach. If Mark Byington hits immediately at Vanderbilt with a fun style of play, Cal at Arkansas, whoever Kentucky brings in, man, I mean, buckle up. It's going to be a fun season. We are live all day at the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford. All four shows are broadcasting live here today. For the Eclipse, you can stop by, get a free raffle ticket for door prizes, plus watch the Eclipse from Two Rivers Ford and get free IOS certified Eclipse glasses while supplies last and find out how to win a free mobile oil change from Two Rivers Ford and their mobile service department. For more details, visit 1045thezone.com today. 615-737-1045 is the number. We'll take your phone calls on Coach Cal bailing on Kentucky for the Arkansas job. Coming up next.
Oh, no. We're coming back today with Morgan Wallen. That's what we're doing on the radio show? Excellent. Yeah, my guy had some whiskey glasses on last night, it sounds like. He got TMZ, Scoop Nashville, the whole nine yards. Anyway, we are going to, uh, we're broadcasting live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford. We're talking about Coach Cal bailing on the Wildcats and heading to the Arkansas Razorbacks on reportedly a five-year deal. Your phone calls are welcome. 615-737-1045 is the number. Uh, let's start with Chuck in Clarksville this morning. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Buck. Hey, you know I'm a big UK basketball fan. and You know, I called in. We talked last week about how I thought it was time for Calipari to part ways. Mm. So that's a relief. I think for a lot of Look Wildcat that, fans right now, don't get me wrong. I love Coach Cal, and I think he did a tremendous job at Kentucky over the years. But you know, it's just getting time. So my choice to back the Brinks truck up would be to drive to Chicago and back it up to Billy Donovan's house because he's been to Kentucky. He knows the situation. He knows the what pressures have to go there. And I think he would be the number one best suited for the job. Will he take it? I don't know. Uh, Danny Hurley, I don't think he's leaving there other than to go maybe to Duke. I think he would go to Duke. But other than that, I don't think he'd leave Connecticut right now. So other than that, I would like Tommy Lloyd in Arizona would be the young younger coach that I would go after. But I think I think Billy Donovan's the first choice. Thanks very much for the call, Chuck. Yeah, I mean, Billy Donovan has to be miserable with the Bulls. They're terrible. They've, they, he has not been able to figure it out. That that has been a franchise in disarray, I feel like, in the modern age of the NBA. He understands the conference. Uh, having been in Florida for as long as he was, he knows what it takes. He understands the resources that Kentucky has. He's worked at Kentucky. Yeah. I mean, I feel like his name has popped up at every at every point whenever Kentucky's had a, call, a men's basketball opening. Obviously, if it doesn't happen this cycle, it probably would never happen. Matt Painter's not a name we would consider, right? Purdue player, he's a program legend, but Zach Eady out the door. I don't know. I feel like Kentucky will make anybody listen. Like, oh, sure. I, I'm not going to just dismiss, like, no, Dan Hurley's not leaving. Why? Why isn't Dan Hurley leaving UConn? I get he's in a good spot, but Kentucky will make you listen. Tony in Nashville's up next on 104.5 The Zone. Hey, Tony. Hey, good morning to you. Uh, yeah, we, we had been talking about the, the coaches that we thought were, um, you know, on their way out. Uh, a couple of weeks ago before this ever happened. We we never thought John it would be John Gere this year or for him to even make the decision uh, to do so. Um, but, you know, Kentucky has not been out of the uh, the first weekend since uh, I think it was 2019. Um, and they haven't won a national championship in nine years. It's been almost a decade. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, – I think it's time to welcome Rick Pitino back to uh, – to, to the state of Kentucky, oh, I think that would be a move to go with. I'm, I'm, you know, it it's entertaining, but I also think that it it would be the right move. There's been several coaches that have done shameful things, went to a a lower school, and then made their way back up. And I think that that time uh, for Rick Pitino should should be now. And I think Kentucky should go and get him. Um, he does seem to hate his players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just seems perpetually unhappy. I, he he's been waiting for this. I mean, this would be this would be full circle if if they somehow got Patino. St. John's went twenty and thirteen and declined an NIT bid this year out of the Big East. Mm, got one viral moment out of their vampire yes. of a coach. Uh, we'll get back to the college basketball discussion here in just a second. But as I told you, we're broadcasting live all day at the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford. You guys know how much I love Two Rivers Ford. They're the South's most trusted dealership for a reason, absolutely. And it's because they offer so many different things for their customer, like mobile service, of which I've had on my 2022 Ford Explorer that I got from Two Rivers Ford, and here with us now is August Wiles, the mobile experience manager at Two Rivers Ford. August, thanks for hanging out. Glad to be here. Yeah, so tell us uh, about the position here at Two Rivers Ford. I've, I don't know how many car, car dealerships have a mobile experience manager, so what does that exactly entail? Uh, so it's definitely something new that, that Ford has put into place uh, that uh, just kind of makes it easier to get service done for, for customers as far as being able to do most maintenance things. Um, we've been doing it, uh, I've been doing it full time for about a year, uh, just doing the scheduling, setting up, getting getting customers handled. And in that year, how often has our friend Tammy Jacobs recruited you to participate as an extra in one of the car commercials around here? 
Because oh. every time I show up at this place, I feel like the Two River staff hates me because they're going to be pulled out of whatever they're doing to come hang out and do a car commercial. Only just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of mobile maintenance do you guys do? Uh, so we're pretty much set up to be able to do uh, any uh, oil change, tire rotation. Uh, further from that, we can do most brakes, uh, filters, batteries, things of that nature. Just kind of the light maintenance on side of things, but the things that need to get done. And if people want to make an appointment, how do they go about doing that? Uh, best way to do is just give me a shout. My direct phone number is listed everywhere. It's uh, 629-255-5226. Or you can do it online at tworiversford.com under the schedule service tab and just look for it to say look for mobile service. I think we should do live on the air, August, you teaching Buck how to change out a tire. It's no. something he doesn't know how to do. <laughs> An oil change is a lost cause. No. That'll never happen. A rotation, anything like that. But just to be able to change out a tire, I think we should do that live on the air. How long do you think it would take you to teach him to change a tire? He looks pretty capable. I'm going maybe uh, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I think, I, I think, I think we got it. I think you are highly <laughs> overestimating <laughs> this man. No, you are, you are giving me way more credit than I deserve. The amount of judgment that I should get from a place like Two Rivers for the fact that I can't change my own tire. But that's why I love Two Rivers Ford. You can go online to tworiversford.com or dial the number that August gave out one more time for the people, August. 629-255-5226. That's August Wiles, the mobile experience manager here at Two Rivers Ford, where we are broadcasting live all day long as a part of the eclipse is it a, it's a celebration isn't it the absolutely is a cool thing absolutely absolutely so come out here get your certified glasses from two rivers ford while supplies last they will hook you up and you can come watch the eclipse with us i uh, think that i'm going to be able to pay lucas enough money to look directly into it without the sunglasses though he is the only person that we're advising that for nobody else do that be safe out there. 615-737-1045 is the number. I'm Buck Rising. Our number two is coming up next from Two Rivers Ford.
It is 1059. Good morning, broadcasting live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center at Two Rivers Ford. I'm Lucas Panzica. In a massive move over the weekend, Kentucky basketball coach John Calipari is leaving Lexington to be the next head coach at Arkansas. He replaces Eric Musselman and signs a five-year deal. Cal had been the coach at Kentucky for the last 15 seasons, winning The 2012 national title, he had only advanced out of the opening weekend in the NCAA tournament once in the last five years. Tennessee Women's Hoops has hired Kelly Harper's replacement. The next head coach of the Lady Vols is former Marshall coach Kim Caldwell, who led Marshall to 26-7 last season, previously had won a D2 national title at Glenville State. The women's college basketball season ended Sunday. South Carolina beating Iowa in the national title game 87-75, despite Caitlin Clark with 30 points. Undefeated season for South Carolina. It is Don Staley's third national title. And the Nashville Predators split the road trip over the weekend, falling at the Islanders Saturday, but winning via shootout at the Devils Sunday. They will host the Jets at Bridgestone Arena tomorrow night. For all your foundation repair and waterproof needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Hour number two here live at Two Rivers Ford, the newly expanded commercial vehicle center where we are broadcasting as a station all day long. Thanks for hanging out here with us. Preds coming back from a road trip. They were able to get the win in overtime last night over the New Jersey Devils. They split a road trip and now with only four games left in the regular season, are trying to clinch a playoff berth. Had last postseason off for the first time in eight consecutive seasons. It was crazy for us to not have playoff hockey in our lives uh, as Middle Tennesseans last year, but the Preds uh, able to get it done late in that game, Lucas. We were wrapping up the primetime broadcast. Me and uh, Robert, they were down 2-1 with like eight minutes to go in the third period. All of a sudden, I looked up. They'd gone to overtime and they were able to win it yet again. This team remains uh, really, really capable as far as the scoring in a big spot. The overtime was electric. I mean, just end-to-end the whole way with the three-on-three. They end up going to shootout. The Preds stay undefeated in penalty shootouts this season. So they split the road trip. Going into the Blues game after a three-game losing skid, you said, okay, if you can beat St. Louis at home and then split the road trip, you're in a great spot with only a couple regular season games remaining, uh, four to be exact, a couple uh, weeks remaining in the regular season. And they did that. So now the magic number is one. If the Preds get their next point, we'll clinch a playoff spot. Or if the Blues don't get a point. Basically, any point, need to lose. any point the Blues do not get or the Preds do get will clinch playoffs for the Nashville Predators. You say they missed out on the playoffs last year. They did. They basically missed out on it two years ago because even though they were in in the first round, uh, the sweep against the Avalanche was anything but competitive. So, yes, we're excited for competitive. There was a moment, like, in two periods of Game 3 where who was that backup, uh, backup goalie that they had um, that went absolutely crazy? Am I thinking of... Uh, oh, I'm not remembering. Oh, you're talking about for the, for the Avalanche? Or no, f- I thought it was for the Predators. I don't Wasn't know. Wasn't there some backup that had like a, an incredible performance and still lost the game anyway? I'm, I'm blanking. It was so fast. <laughs> it's so fast. It was over so quickly. Uh, either way, a forgettable trip to the postseason in that first round sweep against the Avs. Uh, Preds did their part last night, but the Blues were able to beat the Ducks 6-5, to five, so still waiting on that Blues loss. So you can clinch... Tomorrow, if you win against the Jets or just get to OT against Winnipeg and the Preds will clinch the postseason and what's been a really fun back half of the regular season. But, yeah, successful road trip overall, even though you drop one uh, at the Islanders. So Ryan O'Reilly gets it done in the shootout last night. He's been perfect uh, on the shootout uh, so far this season. Every Alex Doherty of, uh, uh, of the Tennessee and had this note in his write-up last night. Every shooter for Nashville this season has scored – on their attempt, and of course, of course, UC Soros makes all three saves against the Devils last night. 
This is uh, – They this, did not le- – that was going into last night. The Preds did not score every attempt last night. Right. But, yes, that was the case going into yesterday. They've been really good in shootouts. So, for for all the different ways that we've seen this team win, what is the biggest question about the Preds moving forward? Is it just about maintaining that consistency on special teams that we saw that little, little bit of a dip after the 18-game point streak um, where they struggled on the road against Arizona – and Colorado, is it just a concern about maintaining special teams? Because I really don't have that many things to point at with the Preds right now and say, no, this is a clear and obvious flaw that may that may pop up, that can pop up on, on any given night as they try and close this thing out. Yeah, I think special teams and scoring depth, uh, continuing to get goals out of fourth-line guys, Michael McCarron continuing a, what's been a great season, 12 goals to this point. Yeah, I think those are the two things for me, special teams and scoring depth, just to not have any drop-off when you get to the man advantage and your stars to continue playing like stars. Forsberg's next goal will get him a career high, will give him the new single-season franchise record. Roman Yossi with a goal uh, last night continues to play at an elite level. He needs to be talked about for the Norris Trophy. Saros is playing well. Lankinen is playing well. The goaltending's in a good spot. So, yes, I think special teams and scoring depth, you find yourself in a good place to make a playoff push. 615-737-1045 is how you join the discussion. And you're getting contributions from a couple of different players, not just the top-line names that I think casual hockey fans may be familiar with. Uh, somebody like Luke Evangelista last night getting the equalizer uh, with a couple minutes to go in regulation. Um, I believe it was his 16th or 15th of the season. Phil Forsberg, 600 career points. As of last night, Roman Yossi, the 21st uh, first period goal of the season uh, for him and the second in his last three games. So he's been leading on that. We talked to Phil Forsberg about that on Friday. Just how much the two of them feed off one another is kind of the, you know, the elder statesman of this particular Preds team. I guess Saros belongs in that discussion as well. But when I think of like guys who are trying to pass the torch – from one yeah. generation of Preds team to another, Roman Yossi and, and Phil Forsberg are the two that popped to mind. I feel like Soros should be in that discussion. Yeah, maybe I'm not being fair to him. Yeah, Kirby, would you have something? No, he just wants to talk to you off mic and not in front of a microphone, which does not help the radio audience whatsoever. <laughs> Turn the microphone on. That doesn't help. Turn the microphone <laughs> No, I do think UC Soros should be considered part of that previous iteration of the David Poyle Predators, the the run it back type of thing. Well, these are technically still the David Poyle Predators. Sure. <laughs> Just from a shadowy back room as opposed to out front speaking to the media on a regular basis. Yes. That well that I mean we we did talk about this and it's you know, I'm not to do a lazy sports talk radio segment about like who deserves the most credit, David Poyle. What? You see Soros was passed the baton from Pekka. Let's, yes. let's get things in right. Yes. Let's go. Thank you. I'm Absolutely. glad we went through all that hassle just to get that kind of game-breaking analysis from Kirby Allen Kirby. Hey, hey, what? You're mar- you don't have a microphone anymore. Get out of here. That's fantastic. No, it's not fantastic. Somebody get my blood pressure meter. God. Yeah, I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. No, I'll get to you later, Caleb Farley, because the Titans do open uh, or do report for their first day of the offseason today officially first day back at school vibes the media availability day will be on wednesday uh right now we are scheduled we are going to broadcast uh in some form or fashion from hattie b's the uh the morning show and us because there's some exciting things going on with us in hattie b's mm-hmm. and we're uh, gonna tell you more about that on wednesday as a matter of fact we're hype about it but i am so excited to be at Hattie B's on Wednesday. Because you're just going to eat for six straight hours. Like, it's going to be concerning. What we need, again, uh, is our guy from the factory at Franklin. Um, oh, George. George. Or not not George like the uh, the angel from... Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life, but that's how he told us to remember. George name, is not the I angel in It's a Wonderful Life. Isn't jo- he? No, George is... The, the, the protagonist. The main character. Yes. Clarence is the angel. Yes. Clarence is right. the angel. Yes. That's how I got the I mix It's up. a Wonderful Life at the Bijou Theater last Christmas, uh, and it was lovely. I'm very happy. A few days before yeah, Christmas. Okay. So what are the Titans doing today? Uh, just coming in, initial meetings. Hey, this everybody, this is your new coach. This is your new coaching staff. If you haven't talked to the defensive coordinator yet, here's Denard Wilson. Here's how it's going to look over the court. They'll have planned their offseason program. Um, but it's it's been pretty, you know, uh, pedal down this whole time because they've just kind of started – I don't want to say that they've just started draft meetings, 
But draft meetings in earnest really just started with everybody last week. So they're trying to get this thing up and running as best as humanly possible uh, while trying to put together for a first-time head coach. He obviously has coaches with experience, and he's obviously got experience, Brian Callahan, with how various off-season programs will be run. But this is his first time kind of organizing all of it, overseeing all of it, and getting in front of the bulk of the team for the first time. Now, I do know that a good majority of the veterans are here. Hopkins, uh, Levis, uh, I saw him throwing with uh, with a bunch of them at Vanderbilt over the weekend. Him and Malik Willis were out there uh, with the quarterbacks, uh, or rather with the wide receivers, getting some work in prior to getting back in the building. It sounds like there's going. they're expecting a pretty high percentage of attendance, even though all of this stuff at this time of year is voluntary. What percentage of the team do you think Callahan has not met yet? Because we know he's talked to Will Levis and obviously the free agent signings and uh, various other players within the offense. But I wonder, to this point, since he got hired, how many guys he hasn't gotten the chance to, to see face-to-face. I'd say a majority. Face-to-face, a majority. Yeah. For sure. Now, I know that there are a bunch of dudes who, who stay local, uh, who work out of the facility, who take advantage of, of the team's resources um, to try and continue to stay in shape and stuff like that. But most, you know, most dudes have been on vacation, been with families, been training with their own people. Uh, it's probably the first time that he'll see a majority of these players face-to-face beyond you know, text messages and phone conversations. Do you think they'll do like team-building exercises? Icebreakers? Yeah. <laughs> Like, did you do like do a, NFL teams do icebreakers uh, <laughs> when there's a new staff in place? Yeah, I, you know, probably to some extent. Like, I don't know if you remember the, uh, oh, what was it? It was some kind of like um, uh, capture the flag type situation under Vrabel the first year because they were still having them stay at the Millennium Maxwell Hotel that shabby looking hotel out in metro center shabby it's not it shabby looking shabby looking. are you talking about out near the facility yeah the, oh it's yes. not shabby brother i've stayed in that hotel it's not that bad uh, you know that does not that does not reassure me as to its quality uh, i just remember a bunch of players getting their cars broken into <laughs> metro center <laughs> while they were having them all stay at the hotels but still uh they had some kind of like capture the flag they paired them up into teams uh groups of two uh, and uh, and I can't remember what was the flag, the physical flag that had to be captured or the protocol for that. But yeah, they do icebreakers like that. You know, Malarkey used to take them out to <laughs> used to take them out to Fort Campbell and put them through military exercises. Yeah. that's a different kind of an icebreaker. Probably not one they were crazy about. They should do something fun. Paintball, go roller skating. Darren Bates. I remember taking the linebackers out paintballing. Can you imagine going paintballing with Darren Bates? No, I'd be terrified. <laughs> I'd rather go roller skating. Let's bring back roller skating. When's the last time you went roller skating? Uh, it had to have been for some, uh, you know, some kind of like grade school party. Or right. Something I feel like, like roller skating is a, is very much like a little kids thing, right? Like when when like most of us have not been roller skating since we were kids. Well, yeah, because you can't drink and do it. I mean, you can, but can't you? I mean, you can. You can. Ice skating as an adult is not frowned upon. Adults go ice skating all the time when Christmas rolls around and a think, rink pops up. No, it's a lovely think, thing to do. I think you're unfairly stigmatizing rollerblading. I don't think people are frowned upon for going rollerblading. I just think there's a certain age where it, you know, ceases to become a part of your regularly scheduled activities. Some of my best childhood memories were at Skates 280 in Birmingham rollerblading. So where's where's the closest rollerblading? I have no idea. Place but to but us? can you imagine the, the Tennessee Titans walking in, <laughs> like making their request of the DJ? No. <laughs> That's, it's written into their contracts that they can't be doing stuff like that. <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't let Mario to surf or something. I can't, can't remember exactly what it was. But, you know, they're probably trying to limit the amount of physical harm that they can put these guys or, uh, or uh, subject these guys to on a regular basis. Anyway, so we'll talk more Titans uh, throughout the course of this week with the team officially reporting today. Speaking of Titans, the first big draft prospect to get into a little bit of legal issues. We'll talk about what happened with Texas defensive tackle Tavondre Sweat coming up next. The Tennessee Men's Clinic is the best place for you to get the help you need if you are somebody who deals with ED. Not something to freak out about. Half of guys experience or deal with erectile dysfunction as they age. You just want to make sure that you've got the proper support system in place. And that's exactly what the Tennessee Men's Clinic is and what they do 
all day, every day. For a decade, the urologists and providers at the Tennessee Men's Clinic have been helping guys with ED and weight loss, and they now even offer aesthetic enhancements and cosmetic procedures. Their ED and weight loss treatments truly tra change lives with no surgery. They are seeing success rates as high as 90%. They specialize in seeing dudes who think they're out of luck and want to regain hope that they can be successful in the bedroom and beyond. So call them for one of their same or next day appointments at 615-208-9090. That's 615-208-9090 or go online to tennesseemensclinic.com and book an appointment today.
Welcome back from the newly expanded commercial vehicle center here at Two Rivers Ford. We keep with the theme. Is this Morgan Wallen? I think it's Morgan Wallen. Jax, is this Morgan Wallen? I, see, this is Morgan Wallen. I, I understand that he's an incredibly popular person. I was actually at a show at the Ryman for our buddy Ernest, and Morgan came out and did a couple of songs with him because Ern uh, writes, a lot of so- writes a lot of songs with Morgan. Um, so that's the first time I'd seen him perform live. Electric energy, for sure. But it's, uh, you know, really on brand for us that today, of all days, when he throws a chair off of their church's new bar at 4 a.m. or what, you get arrested at 4 a.m. Now, we can make fun of this because no one was hurt, right? Yes. Like, that is something that could end Nobody very, very, very badly. Nobody was with a chair. Yes. Yeah, so very fortunate that no one was hurt. But I wonder what kind of chair it was. Like, a bar stool? Was it, uh, you know, kind of one of those loungy chairs that you'll see on a rooftop sometimes? No, he's not a very big person. I can't imagine that he's got the, the physical strength to toss maybe, a chair. Maybe a fold-up top. chair. Do you think it was a fold-up chair? Uh, do you think that uh, Eric Church at his new bar is displaying fold-up chairs? Perhaps Probably they're going not. for a different vibe? I don't know. Either way. Uh, yeah, so, you know, in keeping with the theme of the show, it's Morgan Wallen Day. <laughs> Kirby's got Kirby's got a Morgan Wallen giveaway. Actually, Moses, what is the what is the QR code that's Morgan Wallen related over there? Yeah, we, we've got an opportunity. If you come see us at Two Rivers Ford's newly expanded commercial vehicle center mm-hmm. in Mount Julia, an opportunity to win Morgan Wallen tickets. Kirby said he went full Bob Knight yes, at the he rooftop. Did. Yes, he did. <laughs> uh, so if you're watching on Zone TV, I'm holding up said QR code. There are other giveaways. I don't think you can scan it through the Zone TV As camera. Well, you, you have to I come here. I see Dirk Bentley. Chris Stapleton. Chris Stapleton and Morgan Wallen. So if you come out and visit us at the newly uh, expanded commercial vehicle center, at Two Rivers Ford, you can scan the QR code for the opportunity to win tickets to any one of those concerts. More and there's Wallen, cookies. There are cookies. And oh. uh, eclipse glasses. You saw cookies. Have you had a cookie yet? Not yet. That's shocking. I've yeah. had Oreos. Well, maybe. Bert handed me some Oreos. Let's make sure that everybody else gets a cookie before Lucas makes his way over to the cookie tray. Um, what were we going to talk about here? Uh, <laughs> Tavondre Sweat has been arrested, not for throwing chairs off of rooftops, yes, uh, but Texas for DUI. Tackle. Also a serious offense that thankfully nobody was hurt. Yeah. But uh, that's the first one, right? That's the first big-time draft prospect to get in really any sort of – it's been a very quiet in terms of the negative news against these guys. Careful, there's still plenty of I know. days left. There's You're right. Still, there's, there's, still a le- there's a little over two weeks, right? Or no, two. a week from – no, relax. It's the 25th. That's right. I know math is hard, but let's, math not, is hard. let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, yes, he did get arrested for a DWI in Austin, Texas. This is the thing. It's 2 in the, it's two in the afternoon, bud. Like, just wait. And I know, I know we do this, and every time I do, I feel like I get a bunch of tweets about um, people, people criticizing me, talking about other people getting D, DWIs without uh, having talked about um, Tehran's on air, which, you know, I think is uh, an unfair criticism, but this is yet another example of just take an Uber. And I say, I say that in any, any case, <laughs> just take an Uber. Like, it's too easy to avoid these things nowadays. Um, but it's a Class B misdemeanor in Texas. His bond was set at $3,000 to Vondre Sweat, and he and his lawyer were seen leaving a Travis County jail, according to KXAN TV in Austin, neither commented on the charge. He, he, to your point, he's really the only person that we have seen um, get in any kind of situation that would hurt his draft stock. And, and Bert and I did this on primetime last night. Has there been a prospect in the last, let's just say, four months since the college football season ended that's had their draft stock go down for any particular reason precipitously? There's not, you know, knock on wood, thank God, there's not been any uh, ACL tears or anything like that in training the way that Jeff Simmons experienced. Um, There's been really not a lot of noise as far as legal troubles for kids who are getting ready to uh, go through the NFL draft process here in just a couple of weeks. And, you know, I I had a couple of people bring up Marvin Harrison Jr. not helping himself at all by not participating in any of the physical components of combine or pro day. But... To act like he hasn't been participating in the meetings or talking with coaches or doing virtuals or doing 30 visits or all these different things, it's not like Marvin Harrison has just been completely – Marvin Harrison Jr. It's not like he's been completely absent from the draft, the pre-draft process. He's just not – it's not necessary for him to do any of the physical drills because while he may not have the highest ceiling of the wide receivers in this year's draft – And by the way, he might have the highest ceiling of the wide receivers in this draft. 
he is so much more pro ready than Adunze or Neighbors right now that I don't I don't think you could find a more confident prospect about being the first picked at their position than Marvin Harrison. And you wouldn't say his draft stock has gone down because he's not participating in pro days. No, like, but I guess the argument was basically he hasn't helped himself at all by sure, not participating, and I just think that's silly. I never have a problem with players, especially players like Marvin Harrison Jr. with the resume they have, just saying, look, man, just put the tape on. Just put the tape on. And Like, some guys need that to boost their draft stock. We've seen it. With guys like uh, Zach Wilson, just what it can do for a player. But just turn the tape on. You, you don't need to see me run routes against air. You don't need to see me uh, catch a deep ball from this backup quarterback throwing at my pro day. But apart from like Brock Bowers or Marius Mims not working out due to a hamstring, right? Not because they didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. There's been nothing up until now. Fortunately, Fortunately. And last year... I, was it just the Georgia guys last year? Yeah. Because the Jalen Carter news the driving. dominated the combine. Yeah. And then the, the St- Georgia kids away from the vehicle. Yeah. Well, the Stetson Bennett stuff was weird, too. And and uh, is that, has that found a solution, by the way? Yes, in LA? he has apparently returned. Did, you, did we talk about we that? We did a all? little bit. We were just like, hey, nobody knows where Stetson Bennett is. So we'll just keep an eye on that. I was getting texts from my, what, my college roommate who lives in Los Angeles. Hey, you need to f- do some journalism on what the hell happened to Stetson Bennett. Where is Stetson? He's like, brother. I so he's know. back. They found him. Yes, he, he has been around i don't know if he's gonna stick around this time but he has been around at rams uh offseason stuff apparently this year so to vandre sweat just just sticking with i hate to turn the dwi discussion into prospect talk but you know obviously this is the draft time of year and this is something that could impact his draft stock he's been projected by most people uh by the way didn't bert say that daniel jeremiah is going to be on the morning show at some point this week Uh, i believe he said wednesday okay so that's excellent uh so you can uh look forward to that later on in the week um, but uh, Sweat projected by most people as a second-round pick. It's not an overwhelmingly great defensive line class, uh, I think, but when you look at the guys who are going to be available in that high second round, how much, you know, how obviously there's going to be a couple of things taken into account for Tavondre Swift. One, is he... Sweat. Uh, uh, excuse me, Tavondre Sweat. Is he... Uh, is he apologetic about the situation? How does he handle himself after the fact? Things happen all the time. Bad things happen to good people all the time. Good people do bad things from time to time. Does not make them bad people for the rest of their lives for certain. And, and while this situation is hugely avoidable and does say, say something about a person's judgment, um, I don't think that it should be an indictment of them for their entire lives. So how much are NFL team's going to take that into consideration how many of them have met with him and know this person well the people around him well how how good is his support system in place to where say if you you know were considering a position other than let's just take for example the 38th pick the second round pick for the titans in uh in 2024 your wide receiver needs are not as dire would you consider uh would you consider a a defensive lineman or a defensive player, not necessarily Tavondre Sweat, or it could be Tavondre Sweat because right now they have a glaring hole next to Jeff Simmons. It's not crazy to sit here and say, yeah, interior defensive line or pass rusher could be an option in the second round, right? Especially after the Ridley signing, like you said. And he is... What do we consider Tavondre Sweat prior to the DWI? Like, did we consider him a first-round type of name? It's not necessarily a deep defensive line class, but... Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, Outland Trophy winner for the best interior D-lineman in college football. Had a big year with Texas. Where did we kind of put him in terms of uh, that category of defensive tackle and where he stacked up? Did we consider him to be a guy potentially available at 38 anyway? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, he's he's right about in a, in a draft class that's not overwhelmingly deep at defensive, uh, at defensive tackle. He's right below the top tier kind of guys and I think a lot of people would have put Braden Fisk below Tavondre Sweat prior to the combine Um, even though the tape is ultimately the thing that you're evaluating the athletic upside of Braden Fisk is something that people love I know I've heard Rip Ryan of Titans Radio talk about his draft crush Uh, ad nauseum he's a lot of people's draft crush it's a good draft crush to have that's a that's a player worth buying stock in certainly Um, but he's he's just below that of this group top tier kind of player even though there's probably not I mean there's not a Jeff Simmons in this draft class just to kind of put it that way though there are some there are some fun edge players 
um, some players that are going to display some versatility. I know, speaking of versatility, Verse, Jared Verse at Florida State is a player who I think could should be able to move around uh, in a defensive formation and how these guys are deployed because it doesn't necessarily be big body, like interior defensive lineman guy. Sebastian Joseph Day is not that. Danico Autry has overwhelming length and size uh, and strength, but he's not like one of these, you know, he's not just some fat 300 pounder that they dropped in the middle of the play nose. And not even Tart was that, even though, you know, the weight uh, situation was something that came up as a concern from time to time along with the, uh, along with the effort. Uh, Chef Ran on the FNM Bank chat says he is so big, uh, talking about Tavondre Sweat, he could eat up double teams, a perfect pair for Justin, or Justin, for Jeffrey Simmons, not the free agent safety Justin Simmons. He says Sweat plus Simmons would be scary. I mean, at the moment, if things were to stand pat, would the ideal scenario for days one and two for Titans fans be alt, solve your left tackle problem at seven, defense in the second round? And it could be very, it could be off ball linebacker, edge rusher, interior defensive line, but defense in the second round at 38. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm kind of at that point, especially. And like I said, like we've talked about Calais Campbell, um, the inside linebackers left at free agents uh, as, as free agents are not appealing to me personally. They would not represent any kind of upgrade. And, and at this point, you're, not prob- you're probably not upgrading from Aziz Elshir. Az- Aziz was, I don't want to say spe- spectacular last year, but he was a really, really good, reliable player, somebody who the team clearly respected as a captain. He broke a franchise record. Yeah. And, tackles in a season. Well, you know, 17 games. I yeah, don't he had an much, extra game to do it. I don't sure. know how much. But still, it's not unimpressive what he did. This was a player who set a standard, and I think Titans fans would like to at least try and maintain that. Um, probably to go younger, to go with a rookie at this point, to go with a Kenneth Murray and to develop a player in that role as the leader of your defense for years to come would be an ideal situation, and I do think that there are inside linebackers in the second, and basically on day two, that would satisfy that. Though without that third-round pick, it does complicate that. Brandon on the FNM Bank chat says, Chris Braswell or Darius Robinson at 38 would be ideal. Joe Alt, no matter what, at seven. But he says, I wouldn't be mad at getting Malik Neighbors. Uh, do we consider Braswell or Darius Robinson, the Mizzou edge, rushers, edge rusher, to be Guys potentially there at 38. I think they met virtually with Darius Robinson. Um, I would expect Robinson to go 38. It, the, the edge guys, how they go in the first round, because obviously that's a premium position, just pass rushers generally. It's always curious to see where the runs or which positions start the various runs first because we've talked about quarterbacks. We know what kind of wide receiver draft it is. Tackles are obviously going to command a fair amount of attention in the first round as well. When when do we see when do we think we see the first edge player come off the board? Because I that's a question that I, I kind of struggle to answer with. It should be right around right after the Titans. Once we get into, you know, Atlanta at eight could use some additional players on their defense. Um, I don't know who's picking mm. ninth. I'll pull off the draft order. Is that, is that basically when do we see Dallas Turner come off the board? You know, or I, could Jared Verse be the first edge rusher taken? Latu is somebody who gets talked about too. As I, I don't think there's consensus uh, that way this year, or at least at least not based on people that I've talked to going through this. The Bears are, have that ninth selection, so a wide receiver mm. probably makes sense. For them as well. Uh, then you get into the Jets, the Vikings, the Broncos, the Raiders, the Saints, and the Colts. I don't know. Who's the Bears' best pass rusher? Uh, Sweat. Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat, Montez who Sweat. they just traded for. Um, they, they, have, they don't have a lot of name brand, like household name type of players on that defense, but when you look at what they've drafted organically, and obviously Iberflus has a defensive background, I think that he... He has helped that group kind of come along, but it's it's not just Jalen Johnson and and, uh, and uh, Montez Sweat. There's a there's a couple of solid, to you know I think would be consensus starters around the league to play for Chicago. Some questions in the FNM Bank chat, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. You can watch this show. B French asks, so do we have the Mr. Irrelevant pick because of the trade with the Chiefs and the seventh round pick swap for Legarius Sneed? Oh, that's a good question. We hadn't even talked about that, have we? The Chiefs, I assume, have going into the draft. Oh God, I hope not. Had the last pick that of means the I'm seventh have round. To stay at the facility until the very end on Saturday. You're not no. calling it early. I don't want that at all. No, they have to get. <laughs> oh, nobody complains about 
having to do their That's job more than you. That's objectively sucky. No, after three days of being at the facility around a bunch Nobody of sweaty media people. Nobody wants to hear people, you complain no, about getting to cover the this draft. Is, this is a completely relatable thing. If they can trade out of the Mr. Irrelevant pick and not make me sit through the entirety of the draft on Saturday, no, that's something everybody can get behind. I, I refuse to accept that people are going to want to wait that long into their Saturday rather than going about their day. At that point, people are just getting the updates on their phone. They don't care about the draft coverage. Uh, so that is not the case, though, because the Titans currently hold the 252nd pick in the draft. Oh, that's, that's from the pick swap. Mr. Irrelevant. The compensatories. The compensatories on the back end. The New York Jets currently hold the Mr. Irrelevant pick. Oh, they they really have two because they have the last two picks of the draft at 256 and 257. So they get to go back to back. Uh Man, I'd be pissed right. if I if I'm if I'm because Mr. Irrelevant gets a bunch of free stuff. It's it's great to be Mr. Irrelevant, <laughs> no, right? No, it's not. Yes, it is. You get like a free vacation. You get a bunch of stuff to be Mr. Irrelevant. Well, yeah, but you also have to deal with the shame of walking up there with a jersey. I after, don't care. After accomplishing your lifelong dream of being an NFL player, you get a jersey that says I'm Mr. Irrelevant. You would rather be the 256 pick. Then the 257th and all the stuff that comes with being Mr. Well, Irrelevant. No, I don't want to be 256. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Whichever prospect. Yes, get, it is better than being the second to last pick in the draft. I would. I, but the Jets have the last two, so I would hate to be the prospect that gets taken 256, oh. and then the Jets turn around and take someone 257 that gets all the free stuff. We should be able to split the Mr. <laughs> Irrelevant stuff. This is ridiculous. Can we switch? That's what I would be yelling for. This is, this is now my mission. Ran, yeah, yeah, but them's that, the break. That is correct. They'd be calling yes. me, we're going to draft you with this two inches. Oh, coach, can't you just wait? Just, <laughs> can't, just wait just, a Just call my name after this guy. You, you got both picks. Where did they get a vacation to? Where did Purdy get a vacation to? I don't remember. I'll that. look it know. up. I know there's a bunch of stuff that Mr. Irrelevant gets. All right. uh, maybe we could ask Ryan Suckup. Ran, Brinker, uh, Anthony Robinson, if you are anywhere within the sound of my voice, please trade out of 250. I don't. Nobody wants to wait around that long. You don't want to wait that around that long on Saturday the NFL draft. They, they feel this, too. It's not just me being selfish here. So, because the money wouldn't be any different, right? Your, your, your no, contract not, isn't any better at that point. <laughs> for being 256. <laughs> you, just, you just get a bunch of free stuff to deal with the shame of the jersey that says Mr. Irrelevant on it. You get a trip to Disneyland. Oh. You get a golf tournament. Participation trophy. Uh, you get uh, a roast, giving advice to the new draftee. No. Um, yes. Uh, so, wait, the, all the former Mr. Irrelevants get together? This is like the Heisman oh, ceremony? You, you, uh, you, after each draft, the new Mr. Irrelevant and his family are invited to spend a week during the summer in Newport Beach. Oh, lovely. I mean, this is, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. But that, that's, a, that's a real thing? They have a roast with all the former Mr. Irrelevance? Uh, that, I don't know. That's Wikipedia talking. But okay. I do know you get the free vacation and the Can't Disneyland trip and all of that stuff. I would love to be Mr. Irrelevant. And there's Mr. Irrelevance that have had fantastic careers. Ryan Succo oh, sure. is a Super Bowl winning kicker. Correct. And we see what Brock Purdy's doing, so... No, to, long way to answer. The Titans do not have the Mr. Irrelevant pick. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, we are broadcasting live today. All four zone shows are live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford, where we are taking in the Eclipse. They have the Eclipse, uh, the uh, verified Eclipse glasses, Eclipse safe glasses for you to be able to take in the sights and the sounds here at Two Rivers Ford. We're going to be broadcasting live during it. Kirby has equipped us with the mobile mic pack so we can physically go outside and, like Donald Trump, stare at it with our bare eyes and point up at it. We're going to reenact. We're going to reenact We're going to reenact the picture of him and Melania. I'm going to be Melania. <laughs> Bert's going to be Donald. Staring up, at the, uh, staring up at the eclipse without the safety glasses. All right, don't be like Lucas and Bert, but everybody else make sure that you're wearing the proper safety equipment. And if you do not possess the proper safety equipment, you can come out and get them here, the glasses, at Two Rivers Ford, where they are also giving away all kinds of great raffle, raffle prizes at the door. We mentioned uh, Chris Stapleton tickets, the opportunity to win them. There is a uh, Dirks Bentley QR code as well for the opportunity to win some tickets to that. And, of course, famously Morgan Wallen as we continue to celebrate Morgan Wallen Day. on the uh, <laughs> what, what, are, what are we now? Uh, seven hours removed from him getting arrested for throwing a chair off the top of a Broadway bar. Where do you think? Do you think he's watching the eclipse from a rooftop on Broadway? He sure as hell not in jail. <laughs> he, he got out faster than anybody I've ever seen. That's wild. Good for that guy. Uh, except don't throw the chair off the roof. You dope. <laughs> Uh, by the way, we are giving away, as a show, a free mobile service works package from Two Rivers Ford that includes an oil change and tire rotation done 
at your home or office. You don't have to come out to the dealership if you don't have time to. The Two Rivers Ford folks and their mobile service vehicle will come to you to register. Upload a photo of what keeps you busy, whether that's your kids and all the things that come along with them, dogs, games, whatever it is that keeps you on the go throughout the course of the day. Upload a picture of that. Tag Two Rivers Ford on Facebook, Instagram, or X, wherever it is that you are participating, and we will pick a winner at the end of the show. Also, you do not need to own a Ford vehicle. They work on most makes and models, so even if you have not purchased a vehicle from Two Rivers Ford, they will take care of you. All you have to do is tweet us, tag us, or send us a picture on Facebook of what keeps you busy for an opportunity to enter, and Lucas will decide your fate at the end of the show. The Lady Vols hired a new head coach. We'll talk about her coming up next. We've been talking all morning about how many services Two Rivers Ford actually offers. It's no wonder that they're one of the top-ranking Ford dealers in the nation. They've got a new commercial fleet division, a new commercial fleet uh, expanded vehicle center, as a matter of fact, for their commercial fleet division, a service and a mobile service division, a certified pre-owned division, retail division, with every kind of expert under the sun, and Two Rivers Ford is non-commissioned, so they're paid to make sure you get the best service around without feeling any pressure like you do at all the other car dealerships. There's a reason that Two Rivers Ford is the South's most trusted Ford dealer. I purchased my vehicle from Two Rivers entirely online. I did it with a custom order. The Explorer that I got was awesome. They delivered it when it was built to my door uh, right afterwards. Like the Amazon experience, nobody goes above and beyond the way that Two Rivers Ford does. And when it comes to basic maintenance, they have mobile service vehicles that can change your oil, rotate your tires, change brake pads, bring you a battery, or even something as small as getting new windshield wipers. Two Rivers Ford has you covered. No wonder they're the South's most trusted Ford dealer at Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com.
Welcome back here at Two Rivers Ford, the newly expanded commercial vehicle center where we are broadcasting live today. We are literally flying blind as a show, and that is typically the case. But uh, we have donned our eclipse glasses, and I can't actually see anything. I can't see a single thing. It's I don't an think these work. Well, my. <laughs> How do you plan to test their uh, their veracity later? I feel like I'm just looking at a at a black screen. Well, I think that's kind of the purpose, so that you can see the thing through the black screen that you're not supposed to look at with your bare eyes. Honestly, the, the not being able to see anything, including my laptop or Lucas or uh, anything else, Bert. is an improvement because I can't see Bert anymore. Because our view was Bert and Kirby here at the uh, newly expanded commercial vehicle center. Put my laptop down. <laughs> You fiend. I'm going to give, you, give you a paper cut. Get you saw it in the periphery. Uh, 615-737-1045 is the number if you want to jump in. And, by the way, if you want to get your Eclipse glasses, Two Rivers Ford has them while supplies last. That Eclipse is going to uh, be underway just about an hour from now, Central Time. So if you are uh, out and about, make sure that you don the proper safety equipment and no, don't look directly into the eclipse because that of course would be a disaster lady vols part way with kelly harper uh last week and very quickly turn around and hire kim caldwell from the marshall basketball program to be the next head coach of a really storied and important program in the landscape of college basketball and again lucas we talked about this last night but it wasn't lost on me yesterday afternoon watching the championship game, just with a little bit of envy, to be honest, because I, I, I kept thinking Tennessee deserves a bigger spot. Not deserves. You have to earn it. You have to go out there, put together the right program, hire the right people, get the right recruits, mobilize name, image, and likeness correctly to make sure that you get your program in a place where you deserve to be competing for those championships. But to see them peter out this way in the last couple of years – I'm sure I'm not the only person who's longing for a time when the Lady Vols were relevant on the national stage, competing with the biggest and the best in the sport, UConn, LSU, uh, Iowa, and South Carolina, who ultimately won the championship last night to complete the undefeated season. Like, What must this environment that UConn women's basketball and South Carolina and Iowa and just what's happening with women's basketball in this country at the college level, think about what that's doing from a revenue standpoint for those schools. For LSU, who, yes, is paying Kim Mulkey a bunch of money, mm -hmm. but they are selling out all of their home games, and they are talked about on a national level, however polarizing they might be. So Tennessee is hiring a coach who they're going to pay $750,000 a year to get back to that point, right? They didn't go out and make the big swing and hire a Kim Mulkey to pay millions of dollars to be an instant success. Danny White's going the route that he has gone at multiple other points in his career, as an athletic director, and to be honest, Buck, if not for Danny White, I would be very uninspired by this hire because all we can do is look at the resume, right? We don't know the person. We're not there. We don't watch them blow you away in interviews. Well, now, before you preface this, what is the resume before you go about the, picking it apart? The resume of Kim Caldwell, and it's not Kim Caldwell's fault. Kim Caldwell was an assistant at Sacramento State from 2013 to 2016. Uh, she's a West Virginia native. You just say her resume is not her fault. Uh, it, I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> trying to use this against Kim Caldwell. My point is, she was the head coach at Glenville State at the D2 level for seven years, won a national championship, went 35 and one in the 2021-22 season, uh, made the Final Four in the 2022-23 season. She went 191 and 24 at Glenville State, playing a very exciting brand of basketball, a state that is uh, or a school that is in her home state of West Virginia. One season at Marshall. 26 and 7. They're eliminated in the first round of this past tournament. So, one year of D1 experience and obviously no Power 5 experience. At surface level, because we were talking about Lady Vols, big swing, right? Somebody that can bring you back to championships. You're saying, oh man, I don't, I mean, Kentucky just hired a, a guy that took Virginia Tech to the Final Four, and you're seeing all of these swings and hires happening around college hoops, men's and women's. You wanted, you wanted the Vols to take a Kim Mulkey type of swing. Now, there's not one out there on the market necessarily, mm -hmm. but that was a huge coup for yes. her, for them to pull her from Baylor. Yes, um, huge. And to get a national championship out of it, what, in the first season or the in, second season? Uh, second? I want to say second. It was quick. Yeah, uh, It doesn't matter. It was quick. But because of Danny White, I'm, I'm okay with this hire because the man hasn't missed yet. The man pulled Lance Leipold out of Wisconsin Whitewater. 
he hired Nate Oates, who had been nothing but an assistant and a high school basketball coach and math teacher to be the head coach at Buffalo. And we see where Nate Oates is now. He hired Josh Heupel at UCF and then at Tennessee. He quite literally has not missed yet on one of these hires. He's following that same mold. He's following the thing that's brought him success as an athletic director with Tennessee Lady Vols basketball. And I'm okay with it because we're all kind of understanding what the expectation is. It would have been probably easier for him to just continue with Kelly Harper, who's a program legend, who's winning 20, 25 games, who has gotten to a couple Sweet 16s. So it's not like we're saying the standard is any different. We know what the standard is with Caldwell, but I'm okay with Danny White going with the person and not the resume, which is what has brought him so much success in his entire career. 615-737-1045 is the number. If you want to get involved uh, with the Lady Vols hiring Kim Caldwell to be the next head coach of the Lady Vols. Of course, this, this is on the day, less than a day removed from John Calipari, leaving Kentucky to go to Arkansas. We'll talk about that coming up next. Who is the face of college basketball? Is it even just a men's discussion at this point? I don't think it should be. We'll talk about that. I'm Buck Rising, live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center here at Two Rivers Ford.
It is 12 o'clock. Good afternoon. I'm Lucas Panzeca broadcasting live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center at Two Rivers Ford in Mount Julia. In a stunning move this weekend, Kentucky basketball coach John Calipari is leaving the University of Kentucky to be the next head coach at Arkansas. He signs a five-year deal per ESPN. Cal had been the coach at UK for the last 15 years. He had won the 2012 national title, but only advanced out of the opening weekend of the tournament once in the last five years. Tennessee women's basketball has hired Kelly Harper's replacement as the next head coach of the Lady Vols. It is former Marshall coach Kim Caldwell. She led Marshall to a 26-7 and record last season and won a D2 national title at Glenville State. Tonight, the men's national championship tips off at 8-20 in Phoenix, Yukon, facing Purdue. The Huskies trying to win back-to-back national titles for the first time since Florida did it in 06 and 07. You can hear the Westwood One coverage here on The Zone, presented by Old South Properties and Farm Bureau Health Plans. In NFL free agency news, the Patriots and safety Kyle Duggar agreed to a four-year extension with a base value of $58 million, $32 million of it in guaranteed money. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Third hour live from Two Rivers Ford and their beautiful newly expanded commercial vehicle center. We're happy to be here with you. Don't worry if you miss us at Two Rivers. Blaine and Mickey are coming up next. You got 3HL on after that. Make sure you come out and get your eclipse glasses to be safe for the events that are just about, what, 40 minutes away from going down. Lucas and Robert have recreated the uh, the famous picture of the uh, 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, and his wife, Melania, looking at the last eclipse in 2017 without the proper protection. Shout out Joey Bananas for turning around that gif very, very quickly. I think you should tweet them both next to one another in the same tweet, at Lucas Panzeca is where you can go to see how we've actually been spending our time out here at Two Rivers, the South's most trusted Ford dealer, uh, where they also have not just the Eclipse glasses, but delicious cookies, delicious Ford cookies that Tammy Jacobs brought over here to us and Lucas quickly uh, ate. Well, there's still the, the D of Ford is still left on the cookie. The rest of the cookie is gone. 615-737-1045 615-737-1045 is how you can join the discussion at any point. We'd be happy to have you. The discussion today on this Monday has been primarily Kentucky-related. Uh, Coach Cal leaving Kentucky for reportedly a five-year deal to become the next Arkansas head coach. He replaces Eric Musselman, who bolted for Southern Cal uh, this offseason or in the last couple of weeks. Since, uh, uh, since Arkansas's regular season has been concluded, Kentucky famously bounced out of the first round. Again, they have not advanced out of the first weekend of the tournament since 2019. And Cal was not in hot water with the athletic department, it felt like, Lucas. Just a very toxic relationship between him and Kentucky Wildcats fans that, you know, I'm sure was going to devolve to a certain extent. And you brought up Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director there, and how he must be a little bit miffed today or in the last, you know, what, 12 hours since this news started to come down, maybe a little more than 12 hours since this news came down. Uh, By the way, who was the first person to report that? Because you sent me the tweet, and I want to make sure that we attribute proper credit. That person uh, had it from the jump, um, and I, I did not recognize the name. Uh, Wes Moore, Mickey says. Uh, yes, yes. So credit to Wes Moore for breaking this news first. Um, yeah, I thought it, it, he's a sports director at Fox 16 in, in Little, Rock. Little Rock, Arkansas. Wow. Uh, so Mickey would know with his Arkansas roots. But I, I immediately when I saw it, I said, no, that's fake. Right? <laughs> yeah, Cal to Arkansas. Okay. And then I saw that Wes this Moore, is an actual. Who's Wes Moore? And then I looked at it. He's an actual reporter in Arkansas, and uh, that's the first time when seeing his credentials that I thought, "Oh, this could this be a thing?" And is this the most shocking coaching move, football or basketball, of this 
offseason if you lump in the college football and NFL coaching characters. Nick Saban retired. Okay. <laughs> Most shocking hire. <laughs> <laughs> so Dr. Belichick, Lucas, Be- Belichick left. Was that shocking to you? No. That he didn't no, get a job no, afterwards. No. You, you are more prisoner of the moment than anybody I know. We'll come in after a title game, Lucas, immediately say that's the best national title game we've ever seen and then forget. You John know, Calipari. The last four that have been just as good. Next to Nick Saban's retirement, which you're right, that was the most shocking move of the offseason in, in any sport. John Calipari getting swept up by Arkansas is far more shocking to me than Bill Belichick getting let go by New England and not landing a job. No, I know, but you can't tell me that it's been the most surprising thing of the news cycle and then forget that Nick Saban retired from football not, what, two months ago? Ne- you're right. Next to Nick Saban's retirement. Okay, relax. Um, uh, is, so, is Arkansas buying him out? I, I suppose they have to That's be. the thing that, that, I mean, that would be the only reason Kentucky would sign off on it. They can't just remove him from his current contract. They would have to pay at least a, a, a portion of the $33 million that it were required to buy, buy, buy him out. But uh, to your point about Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director, you mentioned the idea of him being a little miffed, maybe, potentially. We don't know, but potentially because they worked through it with Cal. Cal had his end-of-season meeting. He then got on his radio show towards the end of their season after the tournament and said, you know, the plan was to come back, uh, to return con- to Kentucky, everything copacetic except for the fan base hates him. Um we don't know specifically when these discussions started. Is it not feasible that Mitch Barnhart might have given him permission, kind of like Legarius Sneed got permission from the Chiefs after being franchise tagged to seek a trade? Could Mitch Bar- not, Barnhart not in theory, and we don't know this, I'm just speculating, but if you're, if you're saying that he's probably pissed today, I don't know what kind of handshake agreement they might have had about okay if you can find somebody to go pay your 33 million dollars cal sure we'll let you out of your deal because otherwise cal sitting there saying you're gonna pay me um or find somebody else who will sure i i could see this as a get out of jail free card a little bit kentucky's administration and for cal yes 100 percent for cal get a fresh start at a fan base that is pumped right now like oh, yeah. i mean arkansas fans are just over the moon at the moment and it is a total 180 from what the environment was with the Kentucky fan base, where Kentucky could have all the success in the world in the upcoming regular season, and still there would be that tenuous like feeling of okay, great, but let's see if you if you do this do this thing in March. It, it's a fresh start for everybody. It was probably needed, and we throw win win around a lot in these type of situations. But I think this actually is a win win for both sides. So the question becomes, who is now the face of college basketball? Because I. You can argue that uh, you can argue that Cal, though he has not had the most success of late, that he's not even the most he's not even the winningest coach in college basketball right now. Though he is hugely successful and obviously a huge figure, Calipari on the men's side has as good an argument as anybody, even though he's not the best coach. It's, it's kind of interesting because women's college basketball has so many more stars than the men's game right now. It's not just Caitlin Clark. It's Kim Mulkey. Kim Mulkey is a hugely polarizing figure. No matter what you think of her, people are going to go to the television maybe just to see her outfits, maybe to see what she's going to blow up on the Washington Post about today. You have no idea what she's going to do. Gino. But you, Gino. G- we talked about this on Friday. Do you think Gino's a little salty that his star power has been taken away? Because for a while it's been Gino... Uh, Gino, is that your phone ringing? I'm going to throw this microphone at you, Robert. <laughs> no, it's not. Why is he here? Um, <laughs> don't turn your microphone on. I don't want to talk to you either. I'm about to make my phone ring purposely yeah, into this it. microphone. Do it. Do it. God. Have you had a wardrobe change since we got here? I just, he just took my hoodie just off. Took his hoodie I just off. can't Good. hang my belly out of here in front of everybody at Two Rivers. It has all manner of stains on it. I'm glad you took the sweatshirt off. Anyway, uh, Don Staley is Don Staley absolutely huge a part of that too. Figure in college basketball. You you have to you could go four or five names down before you get to Geno. Now some of this, I mean, Paige Beckers is returning at UConn. Is she as big a star as Gino Oriema? She's the she's Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark, and I know the injury situation happened, but the the women's game has definitively more star power than the men's has in at least the last I call it two to three seasons. Yet Cal is probably the biggest celebrity. Yes. In college basketball, still it matters. Yeah, I or, don't, does that make him the face of the sport though? No, uh, Danny Hurley is the face of college. UConn as a program 
is currently yeah, the face women's. of college basketball. <laughs> yeah. he, that, I that am is going Robert. to hit him with that, that is Robert. <laughs> this is a little this is a little soft. <laughs> Kirby That's snatching fantastic. the mic away. Uh, they, as if Kirby's any better about on air protocol. Kirby's yelling at us half the time without a microphone. No, you're both to blame, all right? Nobody is get, guiltless here or uh, uh, blameless here. Anyway, 615 737 1045 is the number if you want to jump in. Who, in fact, is the face of college basketball? Because I'd advocate for Dawn Staley. I think, she, I think she's her. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I don't. And she's, the first, she's doing it in the women's game dominant as a player and coach yes and i think she's the first one in the women's game that we can really that was a legitimate star as a player because you, you know the women's game obviously when pat was playing was yeah. a completely different thing and uh and obviously gino you can't say that kim mulkey was a good player at louisiana tech but don staley was a star at uva and uh and now a star in coaching and i think she's the first to reach that mark on the women's side uh, speaking of women who are better at, than men at things Teresa walker has texted us of the associated press she says that uh, Cal leaving means no buyout from what I've read. Buyout only if UK fired him. Wow. But the, uh, the, question, um, the question I think that may have gotten lost in this is did Arkansas buy out Cal's contract? Or perhaps she's saying that no buyout whatsoever. I just I can't imagine that that would be allowed. So I, I would think that Arkansas would have to pay some kind of percentage. But uh, to, to Reese's point, I haven't seen any reporting. Uh, about facts or figures anywhere out there other than a reported five-year yeah. deal. They've got that chicken tender money. <laughs> oh, the Raising Cane's guy? Tyson. Oh, Tyson, even bigger. Yep. Goodness. They got that Walmart money. They got that Jerry Jones money. They got that chicken tender. Arkansas has got money. Arkansas got money. <laughs> Arkansas is probably the, one of those schools that if you don't really follow college athletics that you wouldn't really think they have as much as they have, but no. Arkansas has got money. Uh so you can jump in on the conversation at any point. Speaking of Dawn Staley, because I do think that she now takes you – know, Cal is the biggest celebrity, I think, in college basketball. Full stop. Yeah. Um, that doesn't make him the best coach. Nobody else would have made the waves he made with this type Nobody of Nobody else. There is not a – there is not – other than – I mean, I don't even, I don't even think that, that Dawn Staley or Kim – I mean, they probably have that, that level of pull, but still, he's such a front-facing individual – um, and so vis- visible. Doesn't he have a podcast now going to where he, he, the first guest on his podcast was Obama? <laughs> like how many college basketball coaches just have a direct line to the 44th president <laughs> of the United States? Hey, Barry, I'm hosting a podcast. You want to come on sometime? Give me 15 minutes. Uh, Puka has tweeted us a picture of Feinbaum talking on ESPN this morning to keep an eye on Nate Oates for the Kentucky job because he has an $18 million buyout mm. at Alabama, and Kentucky just saved that $33 million buyout by not having to fire Cal. So this is going to be fascinating, man. This is going to be such a fun coaching search, uh, I feel like. Or, or maybe it'll be like Alabama at Kalen DeBoer, and it'll just be swift. They know who they want. They make the call, and in 72 hours or less, it's over. Uh, let's hear from Don Staley, Jackson, uh, last night after winning the national title. Uh, South Carolina outlasts Iowa to win the program's third title in history. Don Staley uh, was interviewed by Holly Rowe immediately after on the podium when she was awarded the trophy and then asked Holly if she could say a couple of words at the end about a particularly important figure in the landscape of women's college basketball. I, I, I really would just like to say that um, I, I have to congratulate Iowa on an incredible season. Awesome, awesome. And I, I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Her, she, carried a, she carried a heavy load for our sport. And it just is not going to stop here on the collegiate tour. But when she is the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to she's going to lift that league up as well. So so Caitlin Clark, if you're out there, you are one of the goats of our games. We appreciate you. Thank you, coach. That's from Dawn Staley last night after South Carolina beat Iowa and Caitlin Clark in the women's national title. The men's coming up tonight between UConn and Purdue. Uh, we can get into the national championship game coming up next. We can also talk about the Titans and the potential for another free agent move before the draft. The team officially reports for off-season program, voluntary off-season work, 
today, and we'll have media availability Wednesday. We'll get into more of that discussion coming up next, live from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center at Two Rivers Ford. QC Kinetics is here to help you as the weather starts to improve, the temperatures get warmer, you want to be out and moving around in the spring and summer, and you don't want to have to deal with that nagging joint pain. Regenerative medicine is what QC Kinetics offers you. They are the nation's leader in those kind of treatments, and they're here to get you in tip-top shape. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of Dr. Mitchell Sheinkup. He's a pioneer in the field of regenerative medicine with 20 years of clinical work, tons of re research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. So call QC Kinetics now and learn more about your exciting options. It's a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call 615-249-4024. That's QC Kinetics at 615-249-4024.
Welcome back live from the newly expanded commercial vehicle center here at Two Rivers Ford, where we are broadcasting live all day long. The eclipse uh, is getting ready to begin. We have uh, hey, we have news, ironically enough. We talked about Tavondre Sweat, the defensive tackle from Texas that got a DWI over the weekend. He is apparently flying to Tennessee to meet with the Titans and Seahawks later this week after posting $3,000 bond on the suspicion of DWI arrest on Sunday. Oh, as long as he's not driving, right? <laughs> no. Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> I enjoyed that. That's fantastic. No, it's not fantastic. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? What do you what do you honestly expect me to do with that when you drop a dead fish in my lap like that when we're live on the air? Don't you feel a lot safer that he's flying? I do, I do feel safer that he's flying. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to take Lucas with me to training camp, and I'm going to make him make that joke in front of a 300-plus pound defensive tackle and see how nope. that goes. Well, I mean, we've, there is a precedent to drunk uh, dr plot pilots landing planes. What's that movie, Denzel Washington? Oh, um, I never saw that movie. Is it Flight Plan or something? Flight. Is it's, it just Flight? Just Flight. Something Thank, like that. Thank you, Jackson. All if right. there was a Tennessee Titan to land a plane, other than Ryan Tannehill, who I guess, who's going to land the plane now? That's right. No one can land the plane? Can it, they officially don't have a pilot on the roster. Get to the shadows right this minute before. Before I fire my laptop at your face. <laughs> don't, don't, throw the mic. don't throw the microphone. Stop it. God, unbelievable. Uh, so, uh, the Premier League Fan Fest was in town this weekend. Lucas was emceeing something for West Ham United, correct? Correct. Uh, and it was one of the more, at least for me, Lucas, I maybe, maybe this just speaks to my ignorance, but I had no idea that they would pack 15,000 people on the lower broad at 6 a.m., have them lined up at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday uh, for the Premier League Fan Fest, and they brought the entire NBC Sports and Peacock crew down to be a part of it. And they also got the Titans involved with a lot of this stuff, so much so that they got, I, I would call it an emotional response from Brian Callahan. They did a, uh, a sit-down. So for those of you who remember Brian Callahan's, uh, introductory press conference where he references a line from Jurgen Klopp, uh, the very famous uh, 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 soccer coach who has, uh, who has been in a variety of different spots. Though, right? It's not just Liverpool. It's Liverpool who he, he's he most really famous. he really made his name coaching for Borussia Dortmund in his native Germany and has been at Liverpool for several years. But he is an internationally renowned yes. coach uh, at, at the uh, at the in 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 world football. So. Callahan references Klopp in his introductory press conference. That then, what, a matter of days later, Klopp steps down? The next day. From his he position. announced he's resigning at the end of the season. <laughs> after, Liverpool's in the title race right now, and he's going to step down after the season ends. So we, we gave Brian Callahan a hard time about that at the Combine, but they did a, they did a sit-down kind of situation where you've seen a lot of these during the draft where it's, uh, oh, who's the cornerback for the, uh, the Green Bay Packers that went to Louisville that was uh, teammates with Lamar Jackson? Jair Alexander, Jair Alexander, they did a video with Jair Alexander talking about Lamar Jackson getting drafted. Showed him on an iPad the moment that Lamar got drafted, saw him get super emotional. So they do this with uh, Brian Callahan and Jurgen Klopp. They show Brian Callahan a video of Jurgen Klopp giving him advice on his career as a coach moving forward, his first job as a head coach at the NFL level. And this is that clip courtesy of Premier League. There's a quote from Jurgen Klopp. I didn't want to just rip it off and present it as my own, but he, he had said it at one point. When you agree on a common idea and work towards it together, uh, you can create something very special. What are your yeah. initial reactions to that? Oh, I said a lot of things over the years. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, to have him actually watch something I said is just a pretty cool moment for me. I'm not going to lie to you. This is Brian's first head coach role. Do you have any advice for him making that step up? It's a train. <laughs> he is right about that. The next world-class coaches in American football or in football, they're already out there. So and he might be one of them. Why not? Seems to be a nice guy, which I think is a really important part of it as well, because you lead a team of people, and if they hate you every day, that can work in the short term, will never work in the long term. Um, so uh, being a good person is, is quite helpful as well. It's all about results. It's all an immediate results. One year, the best manager in the world. Next year, everybody thinks somebody 
suck your football brain off and it's just like, oh, oh he's not that good anymore, <laughs> stuff like this. The more together you are with the group of players, with the staff and the supporters, the more likely it is you will get through these periods without any scars. <laughs> well said. Be yourself, work extremely hard, be ready for knocks and don't lose confidence. Um, but now I will follow his way, so I'm not sure when I have time from the summer and so maybe I can watch a football, American football game as well. That's awesome. That's a really cool thing to hear him kind of echo all the things that I took from him from just reading a book about him and, and reading some articles and watching some interviews. Um, that's, a, that's pretty cool, man. That's, that's a, he's a legend. Can I get a copy of that? Of I, course, okay. yeah, 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 no worries, yeah. Cool. Oh pretty remarkable to be honest so that is courtesy of the premier league on nbc's uh twitter account the exchange well not an exchange between jurgen klopp and brian callahan but uh and some advice from jurgen klopp uh to brian callahan kirby has thoughts all respect to the germans what the heck was that <laughs> did you hear it kirby i heard it i heard some guy in broken english oh no Kirby. Mandering on and on and on about something that had nothing to do with what's Kirby going on. Kirby and Robert both Nashville. had the same visceral reaction to him saying Verk <laughs> instead like, of work. That was Brian we, Callahan. We've got an eclipse to cover here, gentlemen. See, Lucas Lucas is touched by this moment between a fellow soccer fan having an emotional moment with somebody who he clearly looks up to and respects in the profession, and Kirby and Robert just came in here and pooped on it. Oh, I, I agree. Hey, there are clop posters in that young man's apartment. I can guarantee you. Me? Oh, he was just so lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> no, man, I love Kirby. It's, man, a touching, it's a touching moment. I'm no moment. Liverpool fan. I just thought it was cool. Brian Callahan referenced a Jurgen Klopp quote from his book in his introductory presser. Clearly looks up to the guy as who's one of the more renowned leaders in world sports. And so for Klopp, Klopp to see that and have a response, giving his advice to Brian Callahan and Callahan watching that, uh, in turn, he was almost giddy. It was just cool. You were almost giddy. No, it, it, honestly, Kirby, if you saw the video of the new Titans coach, Kirby's going to hate the new Titans coach because of this. Uh, no, 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 it's too late. You have the mic. Don't yeah. give him back the microphone. It's on now, the record. Now, Kirby hates Brian Kirby, Callahan. Kirby, listen, and, and Kirby, this is a shame. Listen, I think we should hear Kirby out. Callahan. Lucas has been uh, throwing propaganda all about. He's been clip-clopping about this place, <laughs> parading him around, and he, he sounds like a, a expensive water sommelier, except for he would say Vata. This is great vata. What kind of vata are you would drinking he, would today? Would he serve me my path water? No, with, that uh, is purified. disgusting wa vata. My you need artisan spring vata. <laughs> <laughs> I won't, I won't clip clop around here anymore if I don't have exotic artisan spring vata. That sounds like the the, the voice that I should be using in that Photoshop. In his home language, vata's lost. Oh my god. <laughs> Both of you put down. The, I hate that they now share a microphone, Kirby and Robert, because not having one of them here is not enough to disrupt. I, the show. I now hope we have both. I hope Jurgen Klopp makes a visit because come training camp, the Premier League season will be long over. He will have stepped down. You think he's coming to training camp? I, I hope Jurgen. You don't even like going to training camp. I, <laughs> I hope Jurgen Klopp comes to America and visits Titans training camp, and we see the very wholesome interaction between he and Brian Callahan, and we get him on the show, and we have Kirby confront both of them. Kirby would never allow oh, it. Oh, but so do I. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, are you sure you want this? I've been to be to embarrassed him. In, front of your, in front of your childhood heroes? Yergi. <laughs> Yergi. <laughs> Let's go hang out on Broadway this weekend. We will find something for you to do. He sounds like a Bond villain. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's enough from the literal peanut gallery. Unbelievable. 615-737-1045. Is, <laughs> I just, I mean, I guess it's not improbable because Mike Chandler was at training camp last year. I know Jurgen Klopp is a much bigger international figure than Mike Chandler is, but they had Ric Flair come through training camp. I guess it's not uh, unthinkable. I can see that it. idea. I can see it. You don't think he's got better things to do in his own mind than come to a Titan, Tennessee Titans training camp practice? I, I don't know what you're doing. We can't even get the NFL Network to come to a Tennessee Titans training camp practice, much less Jurgen Klopp come visit. I, I don't know what his retirement plan is, but uh, I, I want to see them meet. I want Jurgen Klopp and Brian Callahan to meet after that uh, really cool well, we interaction. Can satisfy Lucas's soccer fetishes at a later date. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. No, it's too late now. It's already out there into the universe. Uh, so we'll seamlessly transition into, will the Titans make a free agency move before the draft? I, With how many weeks? We've got about, we've got about two and a half weeks 
until this thing actually goes down. Are they going to just completely hold Pat and not continue to pursue guys and, and churn the bottom of the roster and things like that? Of course not. They're going to continue to explore players. They're going to continue to meet with players' representation. I, I can't guarantee you that they will sign a specific player before the draft goes down on Thursday night, uh, the 25th. In fact, it may be beneficial to them at this point to just wait until the post-draft for a variety of different positions because then after you address your Let's say they draft a defensive tackle in the second round, okay? Then you go back through in the post-draft and evaluate, does Calais Campbell still make sense as an addition to that as opposed to signing him beforehand, spending a bunch of money on him beforehand, and potentially getting him on a one-year deal as kind of one of these Kyle Van Noy type signings to put your pass rush, your defensive front over the edge. That's, that's the thing that I'm kind of sitting back here waiting for, but I just can't imagine a world where they draft a safety and sign a safety with what they've got already on the roster. I mean, do you kind of go through the draft process, see how the board falls for you, and then after coming out of it, reassess what holes are still left on the roster and then revisit the free agency pool? Because what names are out there in free agency right now where it's, okay. It's the same ones we've been repeating. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like that group, for the most part, if they haven't been signed yet, are probably still going to be around after the draft. Kyle Duggar was signed, just going to stay in New England, signs an extension with the Patriots. And he was on a transition tag. It wasn't an outright right. franchise tag. So they would have had yeah, the option to keep him no matter what. So at this point, like Justin Simmons, does Justin Simmons expect to sign anywhere before the NFL draft? Or are, are, are all teams going to be doing this where it's just see how the board falls and then reassess uh, what's left to address on the roster after the draft. See, I think there's a different discussion between safety and a lot of other positions because I do think the safety market with all of the guys that are out there, because we keep bringing up Justin Simmons and Marcus May, but we haven't talked at all about um, both of the Seattle safeties, uh, Seattle Seahawks safeties getting released. There's a ton of, of veteran players out there on the open market that you can have options for. So I, I would imagine that teams – would sign a couple of these veteran guys before the draft actually goes down. I think you'd like to have your starting safety in place if you're the Titans, if you're the uh, – I don't know who else has needs at safety right now? I know the Colts re-signed one of their own again. Um, and to, to continue, Julian Blackman. Julian Bla- Blackman to continue this kind of uh, – this trend with Indianapolis. But it is, it is a position group that has so many vets in it right now not just and it, and we we haven't even talked about veteran corners who may be open to playing safety. That's a situation Logan Ryan has done that in his career. Quandre Diggs who just got cut from Seattle, that was very much a part of his process. I would expect a variety of different players to at least have those conversations, guys who are starting to get up there into their 30s um, to give teams a variety of different options because maybe you don't want maybe you don't want Quandre Diggs to play corner anymore for obvious reasons, because the athleticism starts to go once you get past 29, 30. Uh, what? What are you looking up at? Something smells good in here. Immediately food distracts him. Yes, I know that's the pizza that Tammy said she was going to get mm. you later. Um, the safety the Titans acquired in the trade sending Bayard to Philly is on the market. Terrell Edmonds has not been signed. Well, okay, so that was a different coaching staff that made him a healthy yes. scratch for going to the strip club in the middle of a practice week. That's not what you want. But... Uh, and I don't know if you're <laughs> like, should, should you be punished? Now, I think there were pictures of him, which is why I think he got into a little bit of hot water. Like there's some stuff that ended up out there on social media, uh, of him, uh, potentially, uh, I don't remember wandering this. through de- deja vu during the middle of a week. But, uh, you know, I don't know that a, a trip to a strip club should be a healthy scratch worthy offense. Um, unless you're just clearly checked out on your season. I don't remember this story at all. It did not. Uh, it was not well received inside the building. Um, Eddie Jackson is still out there. He was one of the first cuts of the offseason, mm-hmm. one of the first like cap casualty. He and Cody Whitehair cut from the Bears at the same time, and I don't think Whitehair has been signed either, just a veteran center I, I don't know guard that for out sure. there. I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't know that 100% to be so. Um, but is that the deepest position left in free agency? Oh, Safety? without question. Yeah, without question. Because all the names that were cut, the vast majority of them, besides Kevin Byard and a couple of other guys, are still out there. So uh, is that a position you feel like you can avoid in the draft then, if you're the Titans, because you're going to have the options, as opposed to off-ball linebacker, where there's just not anybody out there that you would feel good about coming in and being heavily reliant on? Um, I can't imagine looking at the Titans' draft needs – 
and feeling like we absolutely have have to have a safety out of this draft class. Now, again, if they're going about this the way that they went about it last year, they're not going to specifically target positions. It's roll the dice and play the board part two, theoretically. But I think that you can have that kind of comfort and confidence after the fact to say, yeah, we can get a veteran safety in the same way that they were a bit chesty about the wide receiver position last year. Uh, you know, unnecessarily so beyond DeAndre Hopkins. You can definitely go through this and come away with, you know, not have, not getting grilled by all of us on Saturday about why the hell didn't you take a safety with your second, seventh round pick? What other positions do we feel like there are options in free agency post-draft? Oh, There's still some wide receivers out there. Like Tyler Boyd is still out there. Hunter Renfro is still out there. Yeah, that, that could play a role. That, but That's he, the anti-running back conversation this year where everybody signed all the running backs prior to the draft because the draft class is not that great. The wide receivers are kind of in the same spot as the safeties where everybody's waiting to fill out their, their pressing needs with draft picks and then seeing what else they can kind of patch together. Because it's, as you mentioned, Hunter Renfro, OBJ is sniffing around a couple of teams. Allen Robinson. Michael Thomas. But these are all names who are more famous than they are good football players. Michael Gallup is still out there. Point in their career. I think Gallup's kind of had a, a pretty substantial fall off since he had a, a significant injury a couple of years ago. He's not, he wasn't. He was a good player in Dallas for a couple of years, but that didn't last as long as I think most people think it did. Uh, we are broadcasting live today from the newly expanded Commercial Vehicle Center at Two Rivers Ford, and we also have our Eclipse glasses in tow. The process of the Eclipse, which is beginning here in just about a couple of minutes and will continue until we have about 95% coverage. Uh, we, should, we screwed up. We should at Leland Statham listens to the radio show. Na- goat of Nashville goats, and we didn't think to ask Leland uh, on the radio show today. I feel, I feel like he should be, uh, that he should be offended by our negligence there. Sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get in, in five, five more years, provided that we're still uh, working here and, uh, and that there's another eclipse to come for Lucas to stare so, into. So do you remember what you were doing in the last one? Yeah, I was in a Titans practice. You were at practice. I was at practice. Did they practice through the eclipse? No, they they took a, they were practicing up until the eclipse, and then uh, Mike Malarkey blew the whistle, and Dick LeBlow and a bunch of the Titans coaches brought out the glasses for all the players and for the media, and we all took in the eclipse together at a uh, at an I, I think it was like in August. I, think it was I thought like it was in camp. May. I thought it was either way. Some in the kind year. of voluntary Maybe. veteran part of the season. Anyway, the light, yeah, it was 2017, and I was at St. Thomas Sports Park. Okay, and now you're at Two Rivers Ford. Mm-hmm. So it starts here in about five minutes, six minutes. The process starts in about five or six minutes. Yes, and lasts until when? Uh, so I don't know how long it lasts, but I know that it should be as covered as it's going to be at about two o'clock this afternoon. So for those of you looking for uh, majority coverage, I think we're expected to get about 95% from our viewpoint here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, That is about the time that it should be peaking for us. I am excited to hear Blaine and Mickey's eclipse reaction. I would like I would like Blaine uh, I would like Blaine to have the breaking news sounder on Mm -hmm. speed dial for the eclipse as close to totality as we'll be able to get. Here in Middle Tennessee. Don't forget, if you haven't gotten your Eclipse glasses, Two Rivers Ford is providing them while supplies last. Lucas and I and Bert and Kirby, we all have ours. You can come out to where we are broadcasting live today in Mount Juliet and get those glasses. You can also sign up for great raffle prizes like a Dirks Bentley concert. We've got Chris Stapleton QR codes for you to enter your chance to win and Morgan Wallen as well. Uh, And check out all of the great quality American-made Ford vehicles that they have always out here at the lot in Mount Juliet. Two Rivers Ford, where we're broadcasting live today.
Um, all right, so since we've committed to the bit and done Morgan Wallen Day on the day that he gets arrested last night on Broadway for throwing chairs off the roof of Eric Bryant or uh, Eric Church's new honky tonk, uh, have you? Do you know any of these songs? Are you familiar with any of these songs? No, we came back to Whiskey Glasses, and I only that one I know. That one is a is a real earworm because when I was working doing radio in Dixon at a country station, that one that's when that song was just a top oh, the really? charts. It's been around for that long? Oh, that was like twenty eighteen. That's been a couple of years. Yeah, he's know. been around. I think I, I think of him as a more recent experience. He's but, been around. You know, it's it's nothing. I I don't I don't dislike it. I guess, but I don't have it. I I my thing with. And I don't want to, you know, maybe I'm just showing my ignorance about country music or something like that. But, like, I don't get it with the Morgan Wallen stuff, you know? I mean, some of them are legitimately, like, catchy. Sure. I am so confused by the obsession with this person. I am confused at how much of a superstar he is. Yeah. And the thing is, after this incident. And, by the way, respect to, like, uh, for, for achieving at that level. Like, I don't want this to sound like I'm. You know, ripping Morgan Wallen or anything like that. I'm just, I'm genuinely confused by the obsession with this man. And it's going to hit another wave after oh, this sure. incident, right? Oh, sure, he's going to be more popular. <laughs> this, know, is his, uh, this is his outlaw moment, right? He went to jail for being a drunk idiot and throwing a chair off a roof. All chairs here at Two Rivers Ford's newly expanded commercial vehicle <laughs> center are safe and accounted for. Yes, we have not had any Morgan Wallen sightings out here today. Uh, but I, I guess I'm conflicted about the, uh, the, state of, uh, the state of people's obsession with him. But I like the energy when he came out uh, that night. I was at the Ryman to see Earn. Um, was electric. I personally like Jelly Roll better. Uh, his appearance, but you know, if uh, it's whatever, whatever makes everybody happy. Uh, tell me about Premier League Fan Fest because we played that clip of Jurgen Klopp and, and Brian Callahan's kind of uh, back and forth type of situation. Kirby but, was infuriated. Yes, he was. Uh, Kirby does not want the soccer analysis anywhere near American football analysis, but. Uh, soccer took over lower Broadway. Uh, it took over Nashville, basically, for the entirety of Saturday. I know not the result that uh, Nashville SC won. And by the way, why the hell can't they keep a lead, Lucas? Yeah, they're, they're struggling to put 90 minutes together right now. We're leading one nothing at the half. Philly makes a couple changes. They get back into the shape that they are known for and flip the game on its head. Nashville will have a week off this weekend before having to go down to Miami and face Messi and company. Messi, who came back into their lineup last week. So it doesn't get easier. Uh, certainly some things to figure out this week. Lower Broadway was awesome. Look slammed. It was insane. It was like it was draft vibes, obviously not as busy. Sure. But uh but in terms of the confused bachelorettes that were everywhere, similar vibes. I cannot tell you how many <laughs> confused faces under pink cowboy hats what I saw. What are you doing here? <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. That's pretty good by you. I have a decent one. Um very confused bachelorettes on Lower Broad, but really cool. They had obviously the Premier League morning show. College game day style uh, at the base of Lower Broadway, TVs with different games and fans of every team from all over the country. Like I did the West Ham event with a former player, fans from LA, from DC, from Detroit, from uh, Portland came from all over the place to to celebrate it in Nashville and spend the weekend. So really, really cool event and uh, record breaking in terms of the Premier League fan fests, Nashville. Swung and crushed it, as they always do. Typically the case. Uh, some comments from the FNM Bank chat. Sorry, I haven't been reading them today, but Lucas has got it up in front of him. Says, uh, from Derek Harris, Premier League Fan Fest was fantastic. Disappointed in the amount of locals that passed on this event. I, You know, did you feel like it was promoted locally well? Because I just, I, I didn't really know much about it. Maybe this is just a product of me not checking my email. No, I mean, the basis. most promotion I saw was on NBC, like during Premier League games. So they're or, playing but, to their P1s. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But uh, it was a really cool event. I, I, West Ham, I know, did a lot of stuff with the Titans and Preds. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, very, very cool event, and Nashville crushed it. All right, rapid fire polls, please. Not now, Jenny. I'm on the radio. Buck Rising gave me a job. Said something about a poll update. Hope that wasn't at that club where you became a folk singer. Anyway, Buck Rising's producer and correspondent has the final poll update. I'm not a smart man, but I know who Lucas Panzeca is. Looking around nervously for the, uh, I'm the seeing eclipse. if it's getting dark out there yet. It's starting to get a little darker. Presented glasses on. by Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealer. Come and see us all day today until 6 o'clock at the newly expanded commercial vehicle center at Two Rivers Ford. Who should be at the top of Kentucky's list to replace John Calipari? CT gives three names. Nate Oates, Shaka Smart, Billy Donovan. 
Billy Donovan's probably going to be the easiest to get out of his present situation, given how wretched the Bulls are and, and his familiarity with not just the program but the conference. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know how. I mean, I don't think Cats fans would be disappointed by Billy Donovan. Donovan no. But I don't know that they would, like. I mean, I really do think that they expect Kentucky to go back up a Brinks truck after tonight's national championship game, win, lose, or draw for uh, Danny Hurley, and say, come on down, buddy. The bluegrass is fine. And the college basketball Billy Donovan left is not the college basketball he would be returning to. Correct. So there's also a question of would he even want to step back into that world? And Chicago's pretty bad right now. Yeah. It, it might be worth it. Fair enough. Matt uh, says Dan Hurley, Nate Oates, or Scott Drew. He says the dream hires Jay Wright, take him out of retirement. Uh, he's currently doing media stuff. He's too pretty to do anything uh, <laughs> with television at this point. Or Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens. He says Brad those last Stevens two- goes to Kentucky and not Indiana. I'll cry. <laughs> I will break down in full on tears. I, I, I bet it just ends up being like a Scott Drew. National championship coach. It's kind of fizzled a little bit at Baylor, uh, but uh, we'll see. They're going to get a big name no matter what. Lady Vols fans, how do you feel about the hire of Kim Campbell? 63% say like it. 23% say love it. 14% say hate it. Can I be meh? It's fine to be meh based on the resume. Yeah, uh, there's nothing that overwhelmingly sure. like, excites me about it, but other than it's a new a new face and the opportunity to to get the program back to a, a place where you know Vols fans expect it to be. But I don't. She doesn't necessarily like do anything to me as far as uh, sticker sticker shock or or just kind of expectations that immediately come with her. Yeah, plays a fun brand of basketball, and ultimately, Danny White hadn't missed yet. So, we'll let him keep swinging here. First time out of the Pat Summit family for that program. If the Titans make one more free agency move before the draft, where do you want it to be? Eric says, just secure the other starting safety spot. Don't expect a rookie to start there. Most people are saying safety, but that's the thing, right? You can go through the draft process, not have to get a rookie to come play safety and still have options in free agency. Yeah, I just think you would want now that because you have that extra couple of of practices and and op- opportunities to meet, like I just think you would want to knock the starting safety thing out just to have them in the building and move on with your deck. Who is currently the face of college basketball? Puka says if there was justice, it would be Don Staley with her unbeaten championship season. I agree. Uh, a lot of people saying players. Karen says Caitlin Clark for women, Zach Eady on the men's side. They're both about to be out. But, uh, yeah, if UConn wins tonight, Dan Hurley. Dan Hurley, I mean, I'd advocate for Don Staley, but uh, yeah. they, they're both going to have pretty impressive resumes after tonight. Uh, one would think. I just hope Purdue loses in the worst possible way. Those are the polls. That's the show. We are done here from Two Rivers Ford, but Blaine and Mickey, 3HL, are going to be live after that. Enjoy the eclipse, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m.